signature of every century has been its skyline. The very ancient, the old, the medieval, the modern. Imprints of man's never-ending path of progress, silhouetted against the ageless canvas of the sky. Our day, our time, our signature, our skyline. Metal fingers beckoning to the invisible, calling to sound the ear cannot hear, and sight beyond the range of the unaided eye. Our era, the era of television. The dream of television had persisted for centuries. The human eye is a miraculous instrument. Perceptive, sensitive, forever tuned to the pulsating wavelengths of light. Yet the eye is hemmed in by horizon. It cannot see over a hillside or beyond the haze of distance. To extend the range of human eyesight, man develops marvelously sensitive instruments, binoculars. Giant telescopes to probe the furthest span of space. But always there were barriers, distance. Could man fling pictures to the sky and gather them in at a distant point? It was a provoking challenge. And nowhere did the challenge provoke more unending experiment and research than at our here. As far back as the 1920s, two men took up this challenge. They shared the irresistible dream of television. David Starnoff, chairman of the board of our Dr. Vladimir Dworkin, honorary vice president and technical consultant of our field. Dr. Dworkin, every now and then uh, I like to put the calendar back and uh, remember another important occasion when you came to my office. You were a good salesman and I was a good dreamer. We talked about broadcasting moving images by electronics. And I remember that I asked you what it would cost to develop an all-electronic television system. Do you recall your estimate? Yes, I remember. I asked something like hundred thousand dollars. Your estimate missed by quite a bit. It cost RGA more than fifty million dollars to create, to develop, and introduce America's first all-electronic television system. And since that time, as you know, RCA has spent another $70 million to pioneer and develop the compatible color television system. But how well that money was spent? We succeeded in extending human sight far beyond the horizon. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing about today. The extension of our sight. You are better acquainted with this problem, you know, than anyone, because of your participation and leadership in so many phases of television development. It was nearly 30 years ago, and I came to your office with that too. The first eye of television. Yes, I well remember. Nearly 30 years ago. What a great invention that you've had to It certainly has fulfilled its destiny. Well, General, this is the grandfather of the pickup. Do you want to see the newest grandchild? Well, I'm all for grandchildren. Let's have a look at it. Well, here it is. Well, it certainly looks very interesting. What do you expect this grandchild to do? Well, that's what they call the Insurvidicon. And I hope and then too it will replace all the existing pickup too. For all the purposes. Well, that's very interesting and certainly very promising because what we need to do is to reduce the size and the cost of these components so that television, color television, both at the transmitting and the receiving end may be within the reach of everyone. That is my hope. Clean and bright as the sun on the sand. The kind of clean you like best. 
next to those you love. That's because new Tide has extra cleaning power. With Tide, things always come out clean and fresh as a sea breeze. More than white, more than bright, really sweet. Great, but clean, clean under the sun. Point came in 1923 when Dr. Borican invented the iconic This tube, after years of further development, became an image of the time, the electronic eye of the modern television camera. In 1929, Dr. Borican and his associates announced the first successful electronic kinescope, forerunner of today's television picture series. The circuit was complete. All electronic television was achieved. It worked. How? The lens of the television camera acts like the iris of a human eye. It gathers in the light rays and focuses them on a mosaic of light-sensitive material that is built into the picture tube. The light-sensitive material converts the light into electrical impulses, the reaction varying with the strength of the light. The optic nerve of the camera picture tube is the electron beam, controlled by electromagnets. The beam scans the picture which is on the plate in rapid sweeping motion from side to side, from top to bottom. When the beam hits the image, it loses varying amounts of electrons and then bounces back to the opposite end of the picture tube where it is amplified millions of times. It is led off to the transmitter in the form of electric current. The signals are broadcast as radio impulses into space. Part of the receiving set is a kinescope. Here, the action is reversed. The stream of electrons synchronized chemically with those of the camera tube, literally picture information on a chemically printed screen line by line. The glow is bright when the beam is strong, less bright when it is weak. Thus, the picture is reassembled. 1931, atop the Empire State Building, the National Broadcasting Company, a service of RCA, erected the transmitting antenna for experimental television station W2XBS. Now, RCA technicians and scientists tackled the next goal, improvement of picture quality. Hitherto, using a mechanical process, the best that could be transmitted was a crude signal of 60 scanning lines. RCA turned to the new science of electronics, discarded the mechanical spinning disc, and soon doubled, tripled, then tripled again the scanning line. Now television was really on its way. In 1937, television strode out of the studio with mobile vans developed by RCA and NBC. Versatile, self-sustaining. New eyes, new vision of the world. A man could sit at home, yet his eyes could scan the countryside. A bright new era dawning. A new dimension in communication. Distance reduced to microwaves. Walls, barriers, mountains, the rivers. Television, the ultimate triumph in man's search for sight beyond the range of the human eye. 1939. Television is ready to make its official publication. The setting could hardly be more perfect. The New York World Fair. It seems the world of tomorrow. The world of tomorrow became the world of today. The 
the RCA exhibit building, where on April 29, 1939, David Sonoff stated, we have added radio sight to sound. Thank you. 
color the touchstone of reality, the vivid pulsating miracle that gives substance to shadows. Beauty, grace, and enchantment to a picture. Problem, how to harness the stream of electrons for color. Early, General Sarnoff has set forth the fundamental goals for color television. First, it must be all electronic. Second, it must be completely compatible. These were the goals. color television tube, the tube with the heart of a rainbow. The lens of the color television camera collects light rays in full color from the scene being televised. Within the camera, an ingenious system of mirrors breaks down the light rays into television's three primary colors, blue, green, and red. They are focused through the lens system to the special camera tubes provided for each primary color. And the primary color signals thus produced are simultaneously processed for transmission. By the miracle of compatibility, color programs can be seen on standard black and white sets without any change or adjustment. also pick up standard black and white broadcast, decode the color information, and apply the picture in all its vivid beauty to the tri-color tube. The world of color. Color captivates attention and brings the beauty of creation close to home. Color transforms the commonplace into the beautiful. It makes the humdrum memorable gives new power to advertising and merchandise. Color, the fabric of the rainbow riding piggyback on an invisible stream of electrons. The Tournament of Roses in Pasadena, California. Telecast in color by 21 stations of the NBC network in the first West to East transmission in color on New Year's Day, 1954. Spectacular. An adjective made over into a noun. 
Spectacular, the finest in television programs. Into the home came the greatest in drama, such as The Four Posters, starring Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy. The list of spectaculars continues to grow to imposing proportions. An entirely new adventure and entertainment for the American public. For pioneered and developed by RCA, is counted as one of the outstanding scientific and artistic triumphs of the 20th century. It has added a new dimension to the entertainment part and has intensified television as a social and educational force. outdoor color telecast, adding new sparkle and new buoyancy to television coverage of great sporting events. The first World Series ever color televised, 1955. television first, the Davis Cup matches, 1955. Football, the youngest art form, the easiest understood, the lively, the bright, television full and captivating color. into the future far as human eyes can see. Saw the vision of the future and all the wonders that would be. One day through television, the entire world will stream into our living rooms with a velocity of light. beyond the horizon, international television, to span oceans, capture all the vivid beauty of far land, find people of all nations, tied together by better understanding, better knowledge, through instantaneous communication of sight and sound.
fine, delicate prices and sweet clover honey. Right? I'm ready to try this, and I promise you a perfect taste every time you do. That's right, perfect. You do the drug. Now write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and get your money back. Remember, I guarantee a perfect taste every time you do. And the one after the other is all the items for any that is not the same. Food out there, it's better than chocolate cake and vanilla ice cream with chocolate sauce. Or white cake and chocolate ice cream with marshmallow chocolate right out of the jar. Whereas the family says you go to cake and ice cream. It's different when every cake turns out just the way you want it. Then you can get it chocolate cake with it. Now that is the cake and ice cream for you. Now that is the cake and ice cream for you. Now that is the cake and ice cream for you. Now that is the cake and ice cream for you.
with a good pressure. And what's more important, a good disposition. We have seen this family start today. Now let's see what happens after the Only four o'clock. And he's doing tonight's homework. What's wrong with these two anyway? Do they have to study all afternoon and evening? No. They just want to hear a special broadcast tonight. So they're hard at work, each in his or her room. No outside interference, and no radio now. This boy and girl both consider their schoolwork one of their most important obligations to themselves and their family. Now that their homework is finished and the dinner dish is put away, this boy and girl have ample time to enjoy their favorite program. Let me repeat, they are enjoying the program. Mother and father are enjoying a bridge game with two friends. One of the principal rules in this house is that a radio or phonograph is heard only in the room in which it is played, so that only those who wish to listen may do so. Thumb. 
which is guarding dog meat. She's a success at throwing things. It looks like everything is ready for the weekend. Since these young people have shared in the work and responsibilities of the house, they can also share in the pleasures of entertaining their friends. Say, that's a shame. Late for a tennis day, too. How about it, brother? Would you lend her your racket? Will? That's the kind of brother to have. Sharing personal belongings in this family is a common practice because every member feels an obligation as a borrower to the lender. Yes, Sis takes care of things close to her. She knows that brother would have to pay for a rethinking job out of his allowance. She's going to save it every dime she can. And speaking of money, this family has worked out a program that can please any boy and girl, and at the same time make better citizens of it. The share of family money given to one for personal use, divided into three parts. Some to save for saving things, and there is a steady record of deposit. Some to save for something they want. A new sweater for her wardrobe, perhaps. For brother, a new crown bra. Then there is some left to spend for amusement. The usual sodas and coats and picture shows. It's up to brother and sister to decide how much they will allocate for each purpose. They manage their own funds, and in doing so, learn the value of money. In this family, the members have learned to live with each other by understanding their obligations and fulfilling them. They cooperate by making each other chores and life fun. They are able to enjoy life more because they have more time for enjoyment and the feeling that the tasks assigned to them have been accomplished. They are alert to the problems that confront all of us, and they will be prepared to cope with each problem as it arises. They have a sense of security because they understand the value of money and other material things assigned to their care. This boy and girl are going to be well equipped when the time comes to take their places as worthy members of adult society. How about going back over what we did? Our goal is, obviously, to avoid becoming another case like Mr. Smith, a man whose present sad condition could have been avoided if he had learned when young how to organize his life, how to handle his obligations. A family in a state of perpetual chaos is really just a family which is living up to its own responsibilities. What you can do to avoid turning out to be like you is it's not so hard. Learn to take care of your own possessions. Keep your own room deep. It's an obligation you owe your family and yourself. Learn to get up in the morning early enough to have a pleasant satisfaction for the day start off in good health and good spirit. And while we're at it, we may as well remind you that you'll live most of your life in some sort of schedule. If you learn to keep that schedule so that it doesn't get ahead of you, you won't mind living by the clock. One of your chief obligations is to pay close attention to your studies during the school year. Presumably your parents sent you to school to get everything possible out of the experience and not merely to climb the law. It's your obligation to make the most of the school now. We'll reward you well when you're earning your own living. The problem of allocating radio and television time can get to be a sore point with any family. To avoid trouble, do your chores and homework first. Then take time off for your favorite program. And when you're listening, remember yourself. Don't let it bother others. When mother and dad entertain, remember that you share the role of host, your home too, and they want you to be part of the pride they feel you Speak their guests, great. Speaking of pride in your home, don't wait to be reminded that the yard needs cleaning up. After all, if you're going to entertain, you'll want your home to look its best. Your friends won't mind if your home is modest, but they will if it's not That's the condition you can change. Any time you must in emergency borrow the possession of some other member of the family, make sure you take good care of them and return them on time. An obligation to hold their own things. One of your principal obligations is to systematize your savings so that when you need 
all the beautiful, solid vinyl colors. Visit your favorite Gentile dealer or look in the yellow pages under floors. Another quality product from Gentile Floors. Every Friday night, Julia's job is to compare the grocery prices of our neighborhood stores for Saturday morning shopping. When that matter's settled, I figure maybe I can get in a little reading before it's time to go to bed. That is, after the radio turns out. Evening papers. And now it's my time to relax. Just the wind up of a typical work day in my life. Today is Saturday, my work at home day. There's always a million and one things to be done around the house. I get things started while Julia's out doing the shopping. There are five big neighborhood markets within a couple of blocks of our house. Julia's rent the shopping around. Going where the prices are lowest and the quality best. Six miles food is a big item in our budget. We have to make sure we get the most for our money. Every Saturday morning, Julia buys stuff for the entire week, so she takes her time and sees that everything she gets is fresh and good. The vegetables and fruits she buys from one store are meat from another. We're all big meat eaters in our family, even little Jackie. That means she has to make sure there's plenty to go around. Also on Saturday mornings, I usually take an hour or so to go over the accounts and bills, figuring out ways to double stretch that check of mine to pay them. I'll keep on the house and car, electricity, gas, all the rest. You, from Johnson West, the Johnson West Polisher Club, an amazing new appliance that can save you hours of backbreaking work that will give you extra hours of leisure time. Yes, it's the newest thing in floor care. Automatic floor care, all through the house, all through the year. This gives you an idea of the kind of job it does. Now there are the floor that you can really be proud of. The Johnson West Polisher Club. We could 
settle matters quickly. And we all think that's best for everybody concerned. You wipe up after breakfast. You wipe up after lunch. But after this, when you clean up, you dine up. With Johnson and Jubilee, the cleaner that you dine up has a new zone. Jubilee gets things shiny clean. It's no dull liquid cleaner film. No dry cleanser grip. Jubilee puts out a protective black shine that makes the best wiper. Try Johnson's Jubilee, the cleaner that shines up as a sleep. The union was a big thing in my life. Still is. I took an interest in helping to set up recreational classes for the youngsters of our members. I figured that someday mine would be here, learning to dance and enjoying it like these children. I remember that day when Julia and I made up our minds we were through paying money to landlord and we were going to build our own home. Easier said than done. We had to scrimp and save every penny to get the money needed for a down payment on a new home. One day, our bank deposit book showed that the money was finally paid. We took this money, got ourselves a Federal Housing Administration loan, and we were on our way. Our new home was finished. We were ready to move in. Then we had the job of getting acquainted with our new neighborhood, meeting our neighbors, making friends with the people we'd be living close to, probably for the rest of our lives. All of Julia's time and that of our children, and most of mine too, which we spent in this house of ours, on this street, living among and with these people. Why does salad taste so much better with best food, real mayonnaise? Because the best food is the first ingredient. Whole eggs, freshly broken into shells, fresh, fresh salad oil, choice vinegar, spices, and extra egg yolk. Ordinary starchy dressing just can't compare. The whole egg flavor of best food, real mayonnaise, is so much better for salad. Or easy sauces like this. Blend two parts best food to one part milk and a little lemon juice. Serve hot and bring the first up any vegetable. It's so good. No wonder best food in America's sponsored selling mayonnaise by two to one. I got an inkling of the kind of neighbors we had the first time I tried to mow the lawn with that ancient broken down lawnmower of mine. The people next door, across the road, down the street, turned out to be friendly and helpful. The fact is, we weren't strangers very long. Those neighbors of ours, working people like myself, made us feel at home right off. It wasn't long before we were getting together for a Saturday night card party. married couple from across the street came over. And another couple who lived two houses down. We found it a swell way to spend a evening. Matter of fact, it's still good. Julia nor I've ever missed voting in any election. And we seldom miss church on Sunday morning. New homes, friendly neighbors, 
Everything was fine. Except that Jeannie ran into a little trouble at school. One night I came home and found her crying. And Julie was plenty upset. Jeannie had a note for her teacher. She had to do better in arithmetic or be put in a lower grade.
unfair to a dieter. Who can stay on a diet when this is all there is to eat it? Now, from the Edward Dalton Company comes today's new way to diet. Good Metric, the world's first 300 calorie diet. Now you can actually eat full meals, like meat, potatoes, grains, twice a day, and still food as much weight as you would with a well known liquid diet. If possible, until now, the Edward Dalton Company discovered how to control calories in full meals, like these two, so each dinner is precisely 300 calories. As you literally complete as our meal can be. Here's a diet not to be specific. You have discretion. For lunch and dinner, enjoy four meals of good and healthy stew, chicken with noodles, or chili con carne, and still lose as much weight as you would with a well known liquid diet. Dieters rejoice with good measure diet systems. Father is on it, mother 
operates on is the shopping center. These new forms of vehicles will bring about special purpose road rates. Office buildings will combine unique parking and elevator service. From his private parking space, father will probably have to walk to his bed. When mother and son arrive at the shopping center, they enter a massive cylinder, and their parking space literally comes to them. Safely above vehicular traffic, moving sidewalks make window shopping effortless. Escalator ramps carry office workers from level to level. From Florida, a powerhouse of vitamin C. Florida Hard Cheese gets Barbara and Scott from Epic Stadium Canada, a real powerhouse of vitamin C and energy. Yes, that's true. I know I need vitamin C every day because I can tell the body that cannot stir. And I like to get my vitamin C the way nature intended. Down to the other health benefits. The living and and cheese from Florida. You want your family to have the best, the natural vitamin C. The kind you get is canned orange juice from Florida. And the canned way is the most convenient, economical way to get it. This 46 ounce can fills eight pink glasses with pure full strength orange juice and in Florida. It's your powerhouse of natural vitamin C from Florida. Advances in technology will give us more time for leisure than tomorrow's living. The family vacation will always be decided by a family home. But getting there will be simplified by a punch card system. And the car is automatically operated and guided to preset destination. Highly specialized pleasure vehicles will have every convenience of home. Today's insurmountable barriers and sheer cliffs will be scaled by highway escalators. One minute, our car is a highway vehicle. A cabin cruiser. Keeping pace with America's economy, heavy duty freight weights will combine railroad volume with highway flexibility. Central traffic control radios and truck trains, instructing the crew to pick up a farm produce unit. Non-stop farm to market freeway will bring remote agricultural areas to within minutes of metropolitan markets. At transfer points within the city, individual units automatically separate from the truck train for immediate delivery to shopping centers. Here they open up to become food dispensers. Another carrier sweeps directly to a seaport destination where it becomes a neatly packed unit in a trip home. To meet faster delivery schedules, the highways of commerce lead to launching ports, where the mobile freighter becomes the payload of a cargo rocket. Highway and automotive design will move forward together. First, we'll have the more efficient gas turbine car, then the speedier jet, the inexhaustible atom, possibly the sun-powered electro suspension car, which needs no wheel. These spectacular suspensions will lead to new dimensions for the American highway. Such visionary ideas will be made to sheer panic will be commonplace for future generations. There will be miles of tubular highways, across hot desert places, over sub-freezing mountain ranges, and even under the ocean. These giant arteries will link together all nations and help create 
create a better understanding among the peoples of the world. As in the past, the highway will continue to play a vital role in the progress of civilization. It will be our magic power, new hopes, new dreams, and a better way of life. Ride in Fluffo, Canada's highest quality shortening and low, low price. Fluffo fried potatoes are tasty suggestions. Fresh, pure Fluffo, Canada's highest quality shortening and a low, low price. Welcome to Futurama 2. Welcome to a journey into the future. A journey for everyone today and to the everywhere of tomorrow. Let us explore together the future. A future not of dreams, but of reality. It is now tomorrow. On the moon, there is no air to breathe. No rain to fall. No sound that can be heard. Yet, here is man, exploring, building his first bridgehead in his span of space. float magically over powdered plains, range the crater's edge, their elastic train-like bodies conforming to every surface character of the moon. Here are bases of communication and supply, islands of existence built to withstand the melting heat of the lunar day, the shattering cold of the lunar night. Men in space now monitor the Earth, while men on Earth are finding a whole new world of answers to the worldwide needs of man. A diamond brilliant draws us to a frozen shore, to Antarctica, the southern polar cap of the world. Here, nations of the world, speaking the common language of science, probe for the Earth's secrets through countless centuries of ice. In local laboratories, form expeditions into the vast white wastelands of the still unknown. And here is Weather Central, forecasting to the world the great climatic changes born in the Antarctic's never-ending wind. Technicians, kept warm within their walls of ice, gather data from the depths of space, from polar winds, surrounding seas. In microseconds, relaying information wherever needed, anywhere on Earth. Three quarters of our Earth lies beneath the cold, still deeps of the sea. A water world in which we now can find abundance far beyond our dreams. Now we can farm and harvest a drifting, swimming, never-ending nourishment. Food enough to feed seven times the population of the Earth. In aquacopters, search the ocean floor to find miles deep, vast fields of precious minerals and ores. And in the deepest trenches of the sea, study at first hand long hidden secrets of survival. Work easily the rich oil deposits of the continental shelf, while trains of submarines transport materials and goods along the waterways of the undersea. And in warmer seas are new realms of pleasure. A weekend, if you wish, at Hotel Atlantis in the kingdom of the sea. A holiday of thrills and of adventure, of radiant wonders in the sun-bright gardens of the sea. Fabulous coral reefs lead us back to the land, an equatorial land. Now, technology has found a way to control the wild profusion of this wonder world. A jungle road is built in one continuous operation. Earth, the searing ray of light, the laser beam, cuts through the trees. Then, a giant machine, a factory on wheels, grinds up the stumps and jungle growth, sets the firm foundation forms the surface plan, sets them in place, and the roadway bed is paved. These forest highways now are bringing to the innermost depths of the tropic world the goods and materials of progress and prosperity, creating productive communities 
that can enter profitably the markets of the world. And offering to us all enchanting tours through the storybook forests of tropic lands. The mountain barrier, legendary challenge of man, now invites communal living in a world of awesome beauty. A new system of highways spans the continent to transport men and goods swiftly and separately across the land. And for our desert, a new technology, waters from the sea made fresh as rain to nourish crops planted in the sand, produce from seed to shipment programmed and processed by a new agriculture, a science of plenty for an ever-growing world. People live today where they will, neither terrain nor distance a deterrent to where the men of the city build their homes. All roads lead, as they have for centuries, to the great centers of commerce and communication, as the Continental Highway now leads us to the city of tomorrow. Plazas of urban living rise over freeways. Vehicles electronically paced, travel routes remarkably safe, swift and efficient. Towering terminals serve sections of the city, make public transportation more convenient, provide ample space for private cars, and from a lower level, covered moving walks radiate to shopping areas that are now truly marketplaces of the world. Its traditions and its faith preserved, there is new beauty and new strength in the city of tomorrow. Technology can point the way to a future of limitless promise, but man must chart his own course into tomorrow, a course that frees the mind and the spirit as it improves the well-being of mankind. Sir, I want you to come in, sir. Well, you see, uh, but, sir, we want your personal reaction to our big news to the paper. Sure, sure, please. Thank you, sir, thank you. Let's just, just one week tonight on this very program, we're going to show you our big news to the paper. November 27th, that's your local to the paper dealers. You can see it in person. There's uh, quite this handsome young couple coming out of the door. Uh, how do you do? Hi. Well, you like it? We love it. I know it's still a secret, but that big new body, those lines. Ah, 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 ah. That's time to be that quiet. One more. You know, from a woman's point of view, you mean it. I know what you mean, but that's what you should do. Well, that's all you can say, what? Yes, yes, you've got it. Just think it from every angle. You look like this, Go on. Go on. Uh, what did you think about it, sir? What do I think? Boy, I know. Studebaker is great. A standout car in the low price field. Where is Lucy? At the Studebaker dealers on November 22nd. And your own personal preview right here on this very show next week. And now let's meet our first contestant. You'll come in and sign in. How we keep the four. Yes. All right, then in that case, let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is.
Does he ever do any drawing like comic strips? Do you ever do any drawing like comic strips? Yes. Table dress turkey. 
and the other headliners are the new belt filters, weighing only 5 to 10 pounds, needle size, small family size, a new breed, especially developed by the United States Department of Agriculture Experiment Station at Beltsville, Maryland. Specially selected birds as are all these birds. Buttermilk and grain fed, expertly completely clean, the turkey transparent wrapped to keep in moisture, all the fine flavor put frozen in. The larger one, labeled as to the exact kind of bird, pen or top, exact weight shown on every bird, label dress, ready for the oven, ready at their peak of flavor perfection any time in the year. That is me. To compare cost between a New York dress and one of these table dress turkeys, a New York dress turkey was weighed as it is sold at the market, the bed and feet on, winter and in. This is the weight you pay for in such turkeys. This is what you have left to cook. Here are the discarded parts. has lost nearly one-fifth of its original weight. When you buy a convenient table dress bird at the same weight, you pay only for the meat you can eat. Feature, into our bulletin go notes on how to give quick frozen table dress turkeys treatment worthy of their fine quality. First, how to be soft. If you have plenty of time, let the frost gradually in your refrigerator in the regular food compartment. Allow 24 hours at least. Or if you're in a hurry, put under cool running water for one to three hours. When just flyable, the legs can be used. Turkey's ready. And what the sauce is, don't refreeze. This is a delicate piece. Draw and cook and eat. Now, be frosted and flavor fresh. The turkey's ready for the finest dressing. Dressing. First, remove the parchment wrapped packages of gifts. Place in salt and water to take them to cover. And gravy. And here are the ingredients for a magnificently flavorful stuffing. This quantity will be right for a 12 pound bird. A 6 pound meal sized bird would be just half a price. Three quarts of bread cheese are toasted. The toasting really adds flavor. Toasted bread cheese. Pour a mixture made by browning lightly. Three fourths cup of chopped celery and three fourths cup of onion. And three fourths cup of butter or margarine. Then add one tablespoon of chopped pasta, one tablespoon of salt, one fourth teaspoon pepper. teaspoon of poultry The giblets.
tablet was bad to me. I'll strike back. That's something new. Well, your tablet probably didn't get to what caused your pain. Yes, sir. That what made my headache come back? That's likely. The vanquish was different. Oh? I read that what caused most headaches is pressure on nerves, too. Vanquish acting as pressure. Well, you're at least so long lasting, most headaches don't come back. Hope it was. For me? For what? You got rid of my headache. Huh, not me. Vanquish. Mm -hmm. If you ever take more than two tablets, shouldn't you try Vanquish? New Vanquish, for relief so long-lasting, most headaches don't come back. And one and one last up, a visit to Giblet Bra. No necessity. This should moisten only lightly. Since the dressing draws moisture from the turkey itself, and could become too soggy with too much liquid as that. Now, news on how to stuff and stuff. After rubbing the inside of the bird with one teaspoon of salt, stuff the neck cavity first. Hold the wings close against the body. Pull the neck skin back over the wing skin and seal the stuff. Stuff the body lightly. That stuffing is going to swell, so give it room. Put two or three stitches or skewers across the opening. Then lace for the cord the way a boot is made. Cross the end. Wind around the leg. And draw the legs close together. Tying securely to the tail.
This is out of the oven. A meal dies belt five to seven pounds. Just right for a family of four to five. And there it is, eating ready. The family just as ready. And there's that bird. A delicacy to teach her to make any meal fancy. Easy to serve. Calendar round.
dirty with fruit and salad, and with the almond, a dish to remember. Cookies and bake. Oh, 
over there, there is your favorite mushroom stall. My water is filling for another meal that life. Enjoy calling Red Cap Ale yourself. It's got heaven. Like this. For anyone with friends and institutions, 
about college, Kay had never included the moment when Dad and Mom said goodbye, when she would be on her own. Likely to have curdled tomatoes. Pour the acid tomatoes slowly into the cold. 
called Milgram, where you can see the cook is practically a five king. Whether it's a class in food preparation or a class in textiles and clothing, the five king tree is mighty important. Do you know what would happen if you use acetone on some layout? It's important to know how to take care of it.
metal fingers beckoning to the invisible, calling to sound the ear cannot hear and sight beyond the range of the unaided eye. Our era, the era of television. The dream of television had persisted for centuries. The human eye is a miraculous instrument, perceptive, sensitive, forever tuned to the pulsating wavelengths of light. Yet the eye is hemmed in by horizon. It cannot see over a hillside or beyond the haze of distance. To extend the range of human eyesight, man develops marvelously sensitive instruments, binoculars. telescopes to probe the furthest span of space. But always there were barriers. This is, could man fling pictures to the sky and gather them in at a distant point? It was a provoking challenge. And nowhere did the challenge provoke more unending experiment and research than at RCA. As far back as the 1920s, two men took up this challenge. They share the irresistible dream of television. David Sarnoff, chairman of the board of RCA. Dr. Vladimir Zwerg, honorary vice president and technical consultant of RCA. Dr. Zwerg, every now and then uh, I like to put the calendar back and uh, remember another important occasion when you came to my office. You were a good salesman and I was a good dreamer. We talked about broadcasting moving images by electronics. And I remember that I asked you what it would cost to develop an all-electronic television system. Do you recall your estimate? Oh, I remember. I asked something like $100,000. Your estimate missed by quite a bit. It cost RCA more than $50 million to create and develop and introduce America's first all-electronic television system. And since that time, as you know, RCA has spent another $70 million to pioneer and develop the compatible color television system. But how well that money was spent? He is extending human sight far beyond the horizon. This is wonderful thing about it. Of our side. You are better acquainted with this progress, General, than anyone, because of your participation and leadership in so many phases of television development. It was nearly 30 years ago, and I came to your office with that too. The first time of television. Yes, I well remember. Nearly 30 years ago. What a great invention this group has become. It certainly has fulfilled its destiny. Well, General, this is the grandfather of the Duke of Do you want to see the newest grandchild? Well, I'm all for grandchildren. Let's have a look at it. Well, here it is. Well, it certainly looks very interesting. What do you expect this grandchild to do? Well, that's what they call the sort of Lidicon. And I hope again, sure, it will replace all the existing conceptual for all the purposes. Well, that's very interesting and certainly very promising because what we need to do is to reduce the size and the cost of these components so that television, color television, both at the transmitting and the receiving end, may be within the reach of everyone. That is my hope.
under the sun. Turning point came in 1923 when Dr. Warrison invented the iconoscope. This tube, after years of further development, became the image of the the electronic eye of the modern television camera. In 1929, Dr. Warrison and his associates announced the first successful electronic kinescope, forerunner of today's television substitute. The circuit was complete. All electronic television was achieved. It worked. How? The lens of the television camera acts like the iris of the human eye. It gathers in the light rays and focuses them on a mosaic of light-sensitive material that is built into the picture. The light-sensitive material converts the light into electrical impulses, the reaction varying with the strength of the light. The optic nerve of the camera picture tube is the electron beam, controlled by electromagnets. The beam scans the picture which is on the plate in rapid moving motion from side to side, from top to bottom. And when the beam hits the image, it loses varying amounts of electrons and then bounces back to the opposite end of the picture tube, where it is amplified millions of times. It is led off to the transmitter in the form of electric current. The signals are broadcast as radio impulses into space. of the receiving set is a kinescope. Here, the action is reversed. The stream of electrons, synchronized perfectly with those of the camera tube, literally picture information on a chemically treated screen line by line. The glow is bright when the beam is strong, less bright when it is weak. Thus, the picture is reassembled. 1931. Atop the Empire State Building, the National Broadcasting Company, a service of RCA, erected the transmitting antenna for experimental television station W2X3X. Now, RCA technicians and scientists tackled the next goal, improvement of picture quality. Hitherto, using a mechanical process, the best that could be transmitted was a crude signal of 60 scanning lines. RCA turned to the new science of electronics, discarded the mechanical spinning disc, and soon doubled, tripled, then tripled again the scanning line. Now television was really on its way. In 1937, television strode out of the studio with mobile vans developed by RCA and NBC. Versatile, self-sustaining. New eyes, new vision for the world. A man could sit at home, yet his eyes could scan the countryside. A bright new era dawning, a new dimension in communication. Distance reduced to microwaves, walls, barriers, mountains direct. Television, the ultimate triumph in man's search for sight beyond the range of the human eye. 1939, television is ready to make its official public debut. The setting could hardly be more perfect. The New York World Fair. It seems the world of tomorrow. And the world of tomorrow became the world of today. The RCA exhibit show, where on April 29, 1939, David Sarnoff stated, we have added radio sight to sound.
something else gives you the racing two bar dollar bill. Right little lift that shows the light of the joys and ice cold Coca Cola. Coke has a distinctive flavor all its own, but no one has ever succeeded in that. No wonder Coca Cola is the most asked for soft drink in the world. contributions to the development of radar, sonar for submarine detection, the sniper scope that made it possible to see a target in dust. Thus, the progress of perhaps the peacetime decade was compressed into four short years. 1945, the war over. After four years of unparalleled war efforts, denial, sacrifice, the American public is hungry for the rewards of peace. And television, with its promise of endless hours of enjoyment, entertainment, was a part of the peace that I can do.
That's one of the big things about Christ. Find out about those numbers. Drive one of your Christ facilities. Learn how the power of leadership is yours in a Christ Cameramen, lighting experts, set designers, writers, directors, were experiencing, studying, learning the new techniques of a great new medium. Programming was better, more varied, more entertaining. Fundamental goals for color television. 
First, it must be all electronic. Second, it must be completely compatible. Three were the goals. Finally, the
imposing proportions. An entirely new adventure and entertainment for the American public. For pioneered and developed by RCA, is counted as one of the outstanding scientific and artistic triumphs of the 20th century. It has added a new dimension to the entertainment part and has intensified television as a social and educational force. Mobile units in a coat of many colors transmit outdoor color telecasts, adding new sparkle and new buoyancy to television coverage of great sporting events. The first World Series ever color televised, 1955. television first, the Davis Cup matches, 1955. Football, the youngest art form, the easiest understood, the lively, the bright, television full and captivating color. through television, the entire world will stream into our living room with a velocity of light. Not too far beyond the horizon, international television, to span oceans, capture all the vivid beauty of far land, find people of all nations, tied together by better understanding, better knowledge through instantaneous communication of sight and sound. Motion, color, vibrancy, people, in the twinkling of an eye, it is caught by the lens of the color television camera, transmitted by invisible waves to all points of the compass. The top of a million homes, antennas pluck the pictures from the sky. At a flick of a switch or the turn of a dial, the scene reappears on the television screen. To perform this split-second magic with true fidelity of color, of sound, of reality, this is the wonder of color television. Compatible color television, an historic example of RCA's continuing efforts to open new horizons of electronic quality. Electronic, easier, and safer. Finally, when was the last time you said to say? I was going to take it out there. What for? I thought that was going to be awesome. I paid so $5, huh? I'd be right there. Any shopping you have in the price, isn't it? I just wish. Oh, 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 or write General Mills, maybe I'm going to take over and get your money back. Remember, I guarantee a perfect state every time you date, this office is after the 
and you don't have to bother with fancy items for any very classic cake. Who would ask for anything better than chocolate cake and vanilla ice cream with chocolate sauce? Or white cake and chocolate ice cream with marshmallow topping right out of the jar? Where's the family that doesn't go for cake and ice cream? It's instant, and every cake turns out just the way you want it. Thanks to Betty Crockett Christmas cake. Here's the Betty Crockett cake right now. Perfect every time. Study all afternoon and evening? 
know. They just want to hear a special broadcast tonight. So they're hard at work each in his or her room. No outside interference and no radio now. This boy and girl both consider their schoolwork one of their most important obligations to themselves and their family. Now that their homework is finished and the dinner is put away, this boy and girl have ample time to enjoy their favorite program. Let me repeat, they are enjoying the program. Mother and father are enjoying a bridge game with some friends. One of the principal rules in this house is that a radio or phonograph is heard only in the room in which it is played, so that only those who wish to listen may do so. Yes, this takes care of things. 
There are five big neighborhood markets a couple of blocks of our house. Julia spreads the shopping around. Going where the prices are lower, the quality fast. Six miles to feed. Food is a big item in our budget. We have to make sure we get the most for our money. Every Saturday morning, Julia buys stuff for the entire week. So she takes her time and sees that everything she gets is fresh and good. The vegetables and fruits she buys from one store are meat from another. We're all big meat here in our family. And little Jack. That means she has to make sure there's plenty to go around. Also on Saturday mornings, I usually take an hour or so to go over the account and bills, figuring out ways to double stretch that check of mine to pay them. I'll keep on the house and car, electricity, gas, all the rest. From Johnson's Wax, the Johnson's Wax Polisher Club. An amazing new appliance that can save you hours of backbreaking work that will give you extra hours of least of time. Yes, the newest thing in floor care. Automatic floor care, all through the house, all through the year. This gives you an idea of the kind of gas that you ought to sell. Now there's a floor you can really be proud of. The Donkey Wax Policy Scrubber features professional type single brush design, so superior and commercial material. One of them is a single brush design. It's a light, easy carry. Far lighter than the average vacuum. Let's go into the kitchen and I'll show you something else. Now, just a quick brush. And we have a little handiest automatic brother. Here's how it works. Isn't this easy? The floor has a single brush in every jump, every city. Yes, it does all the scrubbing, and you stand up all the way. It's easy single brush design to make spattering and walls and woodwork. When you take up the side, there's the cleanest floor you've ever seen. Yes, it's the greatest thing in floor care for the home. The wonderful new wood shaving Johnson Wax Polish and Scrubbing. See it at your quiet for the press. As I turn it on for my check, all of a sudden, I had an odd feeling about the day on me. It was exactly 13 years ago this week that I first went to work at the plant. 13 years. A lot of things have happened to me since that first week. It was that big day when I joined our auto workers union, the UAW, United Auto Workers. And not long after that, the fellows in my department elected me to shop and do it. Workers in our department had any grievances or complaints. They brought them to me, and I'd take them up with the foreman. If the foreman felt he couldn't make a fair decision or settle the grievance, he went to a higher representative of marriage. Committee meetings were held to discuss the personal problems, the troubles that come up among workers or between management and workers. The main thing is for the union and management to get together and settle things fair and square for everybody. helping to set up recreational classes for the youngsters of our members. I think it's 
someday mine would be here, learning to dance and enjoying it like these children. I remember that day when Julia and I made up our minds we were through paying money to landlords. We were going to build our own home. Easier said than done. We had to scrimp and save every penny to get the money needed for a down payment on a new home. But one day, our bank deposit book showed that the money was finally paid. We took this money, got ourselves a Federal Housing Administration loan, we were on our way. Our new home was finished. We were ready to move in. Then we had the job of getting acquainted with our new neighborhood, meeting our neighbors, making friends with the people we'd be living close to, probably for the rest of our lives. All of Julia's time and that of our children, and most of mine too, but we stand in this house of ours, on this street, living among and with these people. Why does salad taste so much better with best food, real mayonnaise? Because of best food, superb ingredients. Whole eggs, freshly broken from the shell, fresh, fresh salad oil, soy vinegar, and vitamins, and extra egg yolks. Ordinary starch and dressing just can't compare. The whole egg flavor of best food, real mayonnaise, is so much better for salad. Or easy sauces like this. Blend two parts best food to one part milk and a little lemon juice. Serve hot and creamy the first up candy that you will see. It's so good. No wonder best food is America's largest selling mayonnaise by two to one. I got an inkling of the kind of neighbors we had the first time I tried to mow the lawn for that ancient broken down lawnmower of mine. The people next door, across the road, down the street, turned out to be friendly and helpful. The fact is, we weren't strangers very long. Those neighbors of ours, working people like myself, made us feel at home right off. It wasn't long before we were getting together for a Saturday night card party. married couple from across the street came over. And another couple who lived two houses down. We found it a swell way to spend an evening. As a matter of fact, we still do. Julia nor I have ever missed voting in any election. And we seldom miss church on Sunday morning. The new home, the friendly neighbors, everything was fine. Except that Jeannie ran into a little trouble at school. One night I came home and found her crying, and Julia was plenty upset. Jeannie had a note from her teacher. If you have to do better in arithmetic, they'll be put in a lower grade. With this light material, you can get all the nourishment of a thing. For this is Coach Parker Boat. Are you ready to eat cereal with all the nourishment of a thing? But without cooking, that family of mine needs nourishment. Lots of it. The kind that oats can give them. And they can get it with Coach Parker Boat food oats. So give your family the strength of oats with new Coach Parker Boat. You 
I believe I felt even worse about things than he did. I thought maybe I could help her with her problems. On my job, I used to be blueprint. There are figures and numbers all the time. But it's been a good while back since I tackled high school math. I figured the best thing to do was for Julia to go down and have a talk with me and teacher. So one afternoon, she went to school.
or chili con carne, and still lose as much weight as you would with the well-known liquid diet. Dieters rejoice with good measure diet dinners. and comfort will be the keynote of tomorrow's highway. A multicolored highway system may enable a motorist to reach his destination by following the correct color strip. The increased speed of tomorrow's automobile will demand that highway signs be larger and more simple to read, so that the motorist can anticipate his move well in advance. Better visibility will be featured in new highway design. As day dims into night, electric eyes automatically illuminate the way ahead. Radiant heat keeps the highway surfaces dry through rain, ice, and snow. If visibility is poor, our windshield becomes a radar screen, showing the outline of objects ahead. Or, fog may be eliminated by dispelling devices along the right of way. Dashboard panels featuring built-in safety controls and electronic operating devices are predictions for the fog. A telesight panel shows up to the minute traffic bullet. The recommended safe driving speed is automatically indicated. Our rear view mirror is actually a television picture.
A journey for everyone today and to be everywhere of tomorrow. Let us explore together the future. A future not of dreams, but of reality. It is now tomorrow. On the moon, there is no air to breathe. No rain to fall. No sound that can be heard. Yet, here is man, exploring, building his first bridgehead in his span of space. Lunar rovers float magically over powdered flames, range the crater's edge, their elastic, train-like bodies conforming to every surface character of the moon. Here are bases of communication and supply, islands of existence built to withstand the melting heat of the lunar day, the shattering cold of the lunar night. Men in space now monitor the Earth, while men on Earth are finding a whole new world of answers to the worldwide needs of man. A diamond brilliance draws us to a frozen shore, to Antarctica, the southern polar cap of the world. Here, nations of the world, speaking the common language of science, probe for the Earth's secrets through countless centuries of ice. In mobile laboratories, form expeditions into the vast white wastelands of the still unknown. And here is Weather Central, forecasting to the world the great climatic changes born in the Antarctic's never-ending wind. Technicians, kept warm within their walls of ice, gather data from the depths of space, from polar winds, surrounding seas. In microseconds, relaying information wherever needed, anywhere on Earth. Three quarters of our Earth lies beneath the cold, still deep of the sea, a water world in which we now can find abundance far beyond our dreams. Now we can farm and harvest a drifty, swimming, never-ending nourishment, food enough to feed seven times the population of the Earth. In aquaculture, search the ocean floor to find miles deep, vast fields of precious minerals and ores. And in the deepest trenches of the sea, study at first hand long-hidden secrets of survival. Work easily the rich oil deposits of the continental shelves, while trains of submarines transport materials and goods along the waterways of the undersea. And in warmer seas are new realms of pleasure. A weekend, if you wish, at Hotel Atlantis in the Kingdom of the Sea. A holiday of thrills and of adventure, of radiant wonders in the sun-bright gardens of the sea. Fabulous coral reefs lead us back to the land, an equatorial land. Now, technology has found a way to control the wild profusion of this wonder world. A jungle road is built in one continuous operation. First, the searing ray of light, the laser beam, cuts through the trees. Then, a giant machine, a factory on wheels grinds up the stumps and jungle growth, sets the firm foundation, forms the surface slab, sets them in place, and the roadway bed is paved. These forest highways now are bringing to the innermost depths of the tropic world the goods and materials of progress and prosperity creating productive communities that can enter profitably the markets of the world and offering to us all enchanting tours through the storybook forests of tropic lands. The mountain barrier, legendary challenge of man, now invites communal living in a world of awesome beauty. A new system of highways spans the continent to transport men and goods swiftly and separately across the land. And for our desert, a new technology, waters from the sea made fresh as rain.
to nourish crops planted in the sand. Produce from seed to shipment, programmed and processed by a new agriculture. A science of plenty for an ever-growing world. People live today where they will. Neither terrain nor distance a deterrent to where the men of the city build their homes. All roads lead, as they have for centuries, to the great centers of commerce and communication, as the Continental Highway now leads us to the city of tomorrow. Plazas of urban living rise over freeways. Vehicles electronically paced, travel routes remarkably safe, swift, and efficient. Towering terminals serve sections of the city, make public transportation more convenient, provide ample space for private cars, and from a lower level, covered moving walks radiate to shopping areas that are now truly marketplaces of the world. Its traditions and its faith preserved, there is new beauty and new strength in the city of tomorrow. Technology can point the way to a future of limitless promise, but man must chart his own course into tomorrow, a course that frees the mind and the spirit as it improves the well-being of mankind. How do you do, sir? We want your personal reaction to our big news to debate. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's go on a big picture. Just one week tonight on this very program, we're going to show you our big news to debate. November 22nd, at your local to debate dealers, you can see it in person. Uh, like this handsome young couple coming out of the showroom. Uh, how do you do? Hi. You like it? We love it. I know it's still a secret, but that big new body, those lines. Ah, 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 ah. Let's try and keep that quiet one more week. So you know, from a woman's point of view, the new instrument comes. I know what you mean, but that's what you should do. Well, that's all you can say, what? Yes, yes, you got it. Just think it from every angle. Do the for us. Go on, go on. What did you think about it, sir? I know I think. Boy, I know. Do the back of the Stand out far in the low price field. Where do you see it? At the Studebaker dealers on November 22nd. And your own personal preview right here on this very show. And now let's see our first success. Would you come in and sign in? on television? Yes. Are you a performer? Yes. Uh, would you be considered a leading man? Yes. I, 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 I got to move in here. Actually, in the general 
context of the questioning, we would have to accept that all the affirmative replies, except perhaps the last one, are not misleading in any major degree. However, I think the last answer is misleading, and we could not accurately describe our guest as a leading man. He's a misleading man. Misleading man. Is there something quite unusual about our guest? I think it's 
buttermilk and grain bed, expertly, completely clean, the jersey transparent wrap, deep in moisture, all the fine flavor put frozen in. The larger one, labeled as to the exact kind of bird, thin or tall, exact weight shown on every bird, label dress, ready for the oven, ready at their piece of flavor perfection any time in the year. That is me. To compare costs between a New York dress and one of these table dress turkeys, a New York dress turkey was weighed as it is sold at the market, the bed and feet on, enter it in. This is the weight you pay for in such turkeys. This is what you have left to cook. Here are the discarded parts. Turkey has lost nearly one fifth of its original weight. When you buy a convenient table dress bird of the same weight, you pay only for the meat you can eat. As you can see here. So with a fine value story. Into our bulletin go notes on how to get quick frozen table dress turkeys. Treatments worthy of their fine quality. First, how to be soft. If you have plenty of time, let the cross grab in your refrigerator in the regular food supply. Allow 24 hours at least. Or if you're in a hurry, sit under cool running water for one to three hours. When just pliable, the blood can be moved. Turkey is ready. And once the frost, don't refreeze. Turkey is a delicate food. Draw and cook and eat. Now, be frosted and flavor fresh. The turkey is ready for the finest dressing. Public dressing. First, remove the parts that wrap packages in this. Place in salted water to pick up the cover. Well, 
Your tablets probably didn't get what caused your pain. Yes, sir. Is that what made my headache come back? That's likely. The bank was worse different. Oh? I read that what causes most headaches is pressure on nerves. Uh, and bank which acts on this pressure. Well, you're at least so long lasting, most headaches don't come back. Oh, good work. For me? For what? You got rid of my headache. Uh -huh. Not me. <laughs> Banquish. If you ever take more than two tablets, shouldn't you try Banquish? You Banquish. For relief so long lasting, most headaches don't come back. One and one last cup of the big giblet broth. No mistake, this just moisten only lightly, since the dressing draws moisture from the dirty itself. It could become too dark with too much liquid gas. And now, here's a hot stuff of sun. Rubbing the inside of the bird with one teaspoon of salt, stuff the neck cavity first. Pull the wings close against the body. Pull the neck skin back over the wing tip and stir it up. Stuff the body nicely. That stuff isn't going to swell, so give it room. Two or three toothpicks or skewers across the opening. Then link with a cord the way a boot is laid. Cross the end. Wind around the leg. And draw the legs close together. Tying securely to the tail. For actual roast, the very best way is to put the bird's breast down in a V-shaped roast cooker. Thus, the sweet fat from the back and melt and run gently down through the brush. Brush all over with melted fat. Halfway through the road, turn brush up. And there you are. Strictly ready to roast. Prepared exactly the same way, whether this meal-sized belt bill or the larger bill. Here's a special news tip. When the roasting time is given at so much per pound, this means so much stuff weight. For an easy way to figure stuff weight, just add approximately one fourth to the weight shown on the wrapper of your table dress shirt. Say the bird weighs 13 pounds. Add one fourth its weight for stuffing, three and one fourth pounds. This adds up to 16 and a quarter pounds, just weight. Take your roasting time for this way. It's all here on the shelf. A 16 pound bird like this. 15 to 17 minutes per pound. Or about four and a half hours. For the smaller six pound meal size bird. 30 to 35 minutes per pound. Or about three and a half hours. Keep the oven low. 325 degrees. with so many things. For this dinner, say for a Sunday in March, we suggest crab apple pickles, buttered green beans, mashed potatoes, a crisp salad. This is out of the oven. A meal-sized belt meal, five to seven pounds. Just right for a family of four to five. 
your favorite mushroom sauce. Mouth-watering, filling for another meal that lasts. Like this. For anyone with training in institutions, that's the lowest 
like finding the family here. many times the slather and other trading and prepared her so well for a home life. Many times she didn't even realize that she was using some of the knowledge she had gained, and that her knowledge meant so much to her family as well as to herself. Time for the folks to leave. 
In all her dreams about college, Kay had never included the moment when Dad and Mom said goodbye. When she would be on her own.
before the acid tomatoes slowly into cold milk and juice, where you can see that cooking is practically applied chemistry. Whether it's a class in food preparation or a class in textiles and clothing, applied chemistry is mighty important. Do you know what would happen if you used acetone on some layers? It's important to know how to take care of things. Just as it's important to know how to make them correctly in the first place. And again in this health planning course, the girls learn that science and art are not as far apart. The space in the house must be planned for many things. For comfort, for economy, and for beauty. Designing the clothing you 
some of the happenings you will never forget. The five pound party that Beth had to announce her engagement. remember the day or the date. All she remembers is the film in the study hall. Alice was behind the scene. She's the one who makes the final thing and has that extra touch. She thought she would like that for the morning. She could see herself at the center of a world made up of large ovens and mixers manned by professional cooks. Gee, what would mom think of a girl she lives like this? For anyone with training in institution management, though, it's just like planning the family dinner. She's really going to town on her physics assignment. And Fred, well, he was busy with his regular routine. It was not the usual sort of thing. Or what? There's the bell for the family. every century has been its skyline. The very ancient, the old, the medieval, the modern. Imprints of man's never-ending path of progress 
silhouetted against the ageless canvas of the sky. Our day, our time, our signature, our sky. Metal fingers beckoning to the invisible, calling to sound the ear cannot hear and sight beyond the range of the unaided eye. Our era, the era of television. The dream of television had persisted for centuries. The human eye is a miraculous instrument, perceptive, sensitive, forever tuned to the pulsating wavelengths of light. Yet the eye is hemmed in by horizon. It cannot see over a hillside or beyond the haze of distance. To extend the range of human eyesight, man develops marvelously sensitive instruments. giant telescope to probe the furthest span of space. But always there were barriers, distance. Could man fling pictures to the sky and gather them in at a distant point? It was a provoking challenge. And nowhere did the challenge provoke more unending experiment and research than at RCA. As far back as the 1920s, two men took up this challenge. They share the irresistible dream of television. David Sarnoff, chairman of the board of RCA. Dr. Vladimir Zwerin, honorary vice president and technical consultant of RCA. Dr. Zwerin, every now and then uh, I like to put the calendar back and uh, remember another important occasion when you came to my office. You were a good salesman and I was a good dreamer. We talked about broadcasting moving images by electronics. And I remember that I asked you what it would cost to develop an all-electronic television system. Do you recall your estimate? Yes, I remember. I asked something like $100,000. Your estimate missed by quite a bit. It cost RCA more than $50 million to create develop and introduce America's first all-electronic television system. And since that time, as you know, RCA has spent another $70 million to pioneer and develop the compatible color television system. But how well that money was spent? We didn't extend human sight far beyond the horizon. It is wonderful things about television. The extension of our time. You are better acquainted with this progress, General, than anyone. Because of your participation and leadership in so many phases of television development. It was nearly 30 years ago, and I came to your office with that too. The first time of television. Yes. I well remember, nearly 30 years ago, and what a great invention this group has become. It certainly has fulfilled its purpose. Well, General, this is the granddaughter of the Bishop. Do you want to see the new grandchild? Well, I'm all for grandchildren. Let's have a look at it. Well, here it is. Well. It certainly looks very interesting. What do you expect this grandchild to do? Well, that's what they call being sort of musical. And I hope it ain't sure if you'll replace all these decisions and stuff too. For all the purposes. Well, that's very interesting and certainly very promising because what we need to do is to reduce the amount of television that we have. Well, that's the purpose of this program. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. Well, it's not the television. Color television, both at the transmitting and the receiving end, may be within the reach of everyone. That is my hope. Because time has extra cleaning power. With time.
50 years of further development, became the image Vorticon, the electronic eye of the modern television camera. In 1929, Dr. Dworkin and his associates announced the first successful electronic telescope, forerunner of today's television pictures. The circuit was complete. All electronic television was achieved. It worked. How? The lens of the television camera acts like the iris of the human eye. It gathers in the light rays and focuses them on a mosaic of light-sensitive material that is built into the picture tube. The light-sensitive material converts the light into electrical impulses, the reaction varying with the strength of the light. The optic nerve of the camera picture tube is the electron beam, controlled by electromagnets. The beam scans the picture which is on the plate in rapid sweeping motion from side to side, from top to bottom. When the beam hits the image, it loses varying amounts of electrons and then bounces back to the opposite end of the picture tube where it is amplified millions of times. It is led off to the transmitter in the form of electric current. are broadcast as radio impulses into space. Nothing. Nothing else gets the breaking sparkle of them. 
bright little lips are so delightful to yours and ice cold Coca Cola. Coke has a distinctive flavor all its own that no one has ever succeeded in that. No wonder Coca Cola is the most asked for soft drink in the world. Cameras probe, explore, scrutinize. Viewers watching the 3,000 television sets then in New York saw the first president ever televised, Franklin D. Roosevelt, officially opening the world of tomorrow. Via television, the viewers toured with the King and Queen of England through Pavilion and Midway. Day by day, television produced new adventures, new victories. New excitement, new thrill. NBC presented the first baseball game ever televised, August 1939. 1914, the nerve-seeking drama of a national political convention, the first ever televised. Philadelphia and New York were knit together by the electronic miracle of television. Radio relays, pioneered by RCA, and the telephone company coaxial cables, wiped out the horizon as the far limit of telecast. Still in the trial and error stage, television began studying its own future as a tremendous new medium of entertainment. The first programs were simple, unpretentious, proving ground for technicians, cameramen, directors, writers, and performers. Slowly, the know-how was gained. Bit by bit, creative imagination began to give form and substance to the new art form called television. A fateful year, war, and the beginning of a four-year blackout for commercial TV. And television enlisted for the duration. Research went forward at War Temple. At RCA's David Conoff Research Center, Princeton, New Jersey, 24-hour shifts explored every corner of a new world of electronics.
Find out about some of the others. Drive one of your Chrysler from the Learn how the power of leadership is yours in a Chrysler. In the agency studios, the cameramen, light experts, set designers, writers, directors, we're experiencing, studying, learning the new techniques of a great new music. Programming was better, more varied, more entertaining. television first, a presidential inauguration. As Harry Truman took the oath, the event was carried over the 16-city NBC television network, extending from Washington, north to Boston, and west to St. Louis. Television was moving with giant strides, and in less than half a dozen years, a flip of a switch in master control could send the television image coast to coast. Dynamic industry employing more than a million. Television, an unparalleled blending of science and art, invention and engineering, private incentives and public service. By television, American business has found the most effective advertising medium. And in turn, advertising has provided the resources that sustain the standards of programming and permit the never-ending research that is the heart of the television industry. Servicing alone has become a major industry, employing nearly 100,000 people. Yes, in little more than a wink of time, television has entered our homes, our lives, imprinted new silhouettes on our skyline. And all this has been just the beginning. There was still another dream to be realized. Still another dimension to the end. Black and white television had been the herald. It put millions of TV sets into our homes. Built hundreds of TV stations. Created an industry, an art, a public service. An exhilarating component of our American way of life. It provided the foundation for the next giant step forward. Color. This is a world of color, and the men of television long dreamed of capturing the full paint pot of nature and brushing it on the screen. How could it be done? It was not an easy triumph, as General Sarnoff recalls. When we first began to think of television in the early 20s, we would have been content. Only the road could have been televised in black and white. That miracle had no sooner been achieved than the eye sensitive to color, and observed that the rose and monochrome lacked true beauty, and the cry went up for color. Never had scientists been put under such pressure and demand. It has been my privilege and a fascinating experience to watch the scientists at work on color television. I marvel at their accomplishment in bringing into focus the principles of radio, optics, electronics, photography, chemistry, and many other essentials so that they might all work together to make color television practical. I congratulate the RCA scientists, researchmen, and engineers who pioneered and developed this new science and art and then created the compatible color television system and the same color picture. Color. Color, the touchstone of reality. The vivid, pulsating miracle that gives substance to shadows. Beauty, grace, and enchantment to a picture. Problem. How to harness the stream of electrons for color. Early, General Sarnoff had set forth the fundamental goals for color television. First, it must be all electronic. 
seconds, it must be completely compatible. These were the goals. tricolor television tube, the tube with the heart of a rainbow. The lens of the color television camera collects light rays in full color from the scene being televised. Within the camera, an ingenious system of mirrors breaks down the light rays into television's three primary colors, blue, green, and red. They are focused through the lens system special camera tubes provided for each primary color, and the primary color signals thus produced are simultaneously processed for transmission. By the miracle of compatibility, color programs can be seen on standard black and white set without any change or adjustment. which can also pick up standard black and white broadcasts, decode the color information, and apply the picture in all its vivid beauty to the tricolor tube. The world of color. Color captivates attention and brings the beauty of creation close to home. Color transforms the commonplace into the beautiful. It makes the humdrum memorable gives new power to advertising and merchandise. Color, the fabric of the rainbow riding piggyback on an invisible stream of electrons. The Tournament of Roses in Pasadena, California. Telecast in color by 21 stations of the NBC network in the first West to East transmission in color on New Year's Day, 1954. Continues to grow to imposing proportions. 
an entirely new adventure in entertainment for the American public. For pioneered and developed by RCA, it counted as one of the outstanding scientific and artistic triumphs of the 20th century. It has added a new dimension to the entertainment part and has intensified television as a social and educational force. Mobile units in a coat of many colors transmit outdoor color telecasts, adding new sparkle and new buoyancy to television coverage of great sporting events. The first World Series ever color televised, 1955. Thank you. 
just want to hear a special broadcast tonight, so they're hard at work, each in his or her room. No outside interference, and no radio now. This boy and girl both consider their schoolwork one of their most important obligations to themselves and their family. Now that their homework is finished and the dinner day is put away, this boy and girl have ample time to enjoy their favorite program. Let me repeat, they are enjoying the program. Mother and father are enjoying a bridge game with some friends. One of the principal rules in this house is that a radio or phonograph is heard only in the room in which it is played, so that only those who wish to listen may do so. Problem. One hand behind my back. Look at I wonder what Betty Bennett is going to do with one hand behind her back like that. Come with me, and I'll show you what every one of you can do single hand. Here, you can tune in this wonderful new Western House television set with just one hand like this, because it has the traditional new Western House single dial control. No more questions with several dials. You just turn this one dial and you're tuned in perfectly. Now, the effect that you're watching now, does the channel ever come in like this and give you only sound? Or, when the picture comes in clear like this, is the sound ever so hard to get that all you hear is this? Well, that never happens. With this wonderful new Western House set, because of the miracle of Western House Central Tuning, picture and sound coming together just like that. And once too, this set stays locked in tune. Now, here's something that will really amaze you. Here's the size of the screen in most cable models. Now, let's compare it to the new Western House screen. There. Now, that's quite a difference, isn't it? Over there in the screen, it's a huge 17 rectangular screen in this wonderfully compact new Western House set. And it gives you a black glass. It means you get a clear, dark picture, even in daylight. Now, this set also has been an antenna, and that means that in many areas, there's no insulation of any kind to save the entire cost of So, to try and put up with the set that isn't really up to date and has an old-fashioned small screen, when you can get this wonderful new 17-inch Western House set at a modest price. Just ask your dealer for the Western House Linwood. There's no other set in this price range that compares with it. You can be sure it is Western House. Well, it looks like that's all for tonight. But it's not all for this. She's appointed herself chairman of the refreshment committee. This is Mother's and Father's night, and Daughter wants to help them enjoy it. Also, Daughter feels it is one of her obligations to be gracious to her parents' friends. She is glad to help Mother in the name, because Mother never fails to help her play hostess to her friends. This is another of Brother's obligations and pleasures. He takes pride in keeping the car clean and shiny, and in return, gets to use it for certain cases. This is a family car in every sense of the word. So the men of the family do their best to keep it looking like you. And the women of the family don't shirk their cleaning taxes either. Yes, this is a busy day for all concerned. Brother shows his ability as a gardener. Here's another gardener. This particular patch belongs to this and to nobody else. She prides herself on her green thumb, which, as Garden taught me, she's a success at growing things. It looks like everything is ready for the weekend. Since these young people have shared in the work and responsibilities of the house, they can also share in the pleasures of entertaining their friends. Say, that's a shame. She's late for a tennis day, too. How about it, brother? Lend her your racket. Well, that's the kind of a 
brother to have. Sharing personal belongings to this family is a common practice because every member feels an obligation as a borrower to the lender. Yes, this takes care of things loaned to her. She knows that brother would have to pay for a restringing job out of his allowance. She's going to save him every dime she can. And speaking of money, this family has worked out a program that can please any boy and girl, and at the same time make better citizens of them. The share of family money given to each one for personal use is divided into three parts. Some to save for savings things, and there is a steady record of funds. Some to save for something they want. A new sweater for her wardrobe, perhaps. For brother, a new crowd run. Then there is some left to spend for a view. The usual soda and coke and picture show. It's up to brother and sister to decide how much they will allocate for each purpose. They manage their own funds. And in doing so, learn the value of money. In this family, the members have learned to live with each other by understanding their obligations and fulfilling them. They cooperate by making each other's chores as light as possible. They are able to enjoy life more because they have more time for enjoyment. And the feeling that tasks assigned to them have been accomplished. They are alert to the problems that confront all of them. And they will be prepared to cope with each problem as it arises. They have a sense of security because they understand the value of money and other material things assigned to their care. This boy and girl are going to be well equipped when the time comes to take their places as worthy members of adult society. How about going back over money? Our goal is, obviously, to avoid becoming another case like Mr. Smith, a man whose present stands in this avoided if he had learned when young how to organize his life on the hands of his obligations. A family in a state of perpetual chaos is really just a family which is living up to its own responsibility. What you can do to avoid turning out to be like Mr. Smith is not so hard. Learn to take care of your own position. Keep your own room clean. Have it It's an obligation you owe your family and yourself. Learn to get up in the morning early enough to have a pleasant and satisfactory meal before the day begins. So you'll start off in good health and good spirits. And while we're at it, we may as well remind you that you'll live most of your life in some sort of schedule. If you learn to keep that schedule, so that it doesn't get ahead of you. You won't mind living by the clock. One of your chief obligations is to pay close attention to your studies during the school year. Presumably your parents sent you to school to get everything possible out of the school year, not merely to comply with the law. It's your obligation to make the most of school now. It will reward you well when you're earning your own living. The problem of allocating radio and television time can get to be a sore point with any family. To avoid trouble, do your chores and homework first. Then take time off for your favorite program. And when you're listening, remember yourself. Don't let it bother us. When mother and dad entertain, remember that you share the role of host. Your home too. And they want you to be part of the pride they feel in you. Meet their guests. Great. Speaking of pride in your home, don't wait to be reminded that the yard needs cleaning up. After all, if you're going to entertain, you'll want your home to look the best. Your friends won't mind if your home is modest, but they will if they're unkempt. That's the condition you can change. Anytime you must in emergency borrow the possessions of some other member of the family, make sure you take good care of them and return them on time. It's an obligation to go to their own thing. One of your principal obligations is to systematize your savings so that when you need something you really need or very much want, you won't have to beg dad for it or borrow on next week's allowance. Learning to take care of family obligations in his early years is easy. After all, it's only a matter of getting into a pattern of good living habits. Once they become habits, you need to worry about them. Take care of your obligations now. And when you meet the responsibilities of adult life, 
You'll find that they will take care of you. Modern way to cook. 
riding show. King of the Steel Super Freezer. Every feature you need. What's this? Well, here comes the pride and joy of the house for his second helping of Mother's own frozen dessert. Better than double dip, says he. Plenty left for dinner, too. The generous capacity of this tray is typical of the whole refrigerator. It's all steel cabinets and it's sealed in steel mechanism. Backed by General Electric five year protection plan. Remember, you're protecting your investment when you buy a General Electric. Here's one of the nearly two million homes that own a DC refrigerator. The famous monitor top is universally recognized as the standard of excellence. This mechanism hermetically sealed in walls of steel, no attention, not even oil. A touch of the nose to put pedal door opener and door swing wide open and easily flooding the interior of the all steel cabinet with light. Sliding shells too. Marvelous to see. Just a little taste of dessert. Prepared and preserved. This marvelous thing is to be super freezer. Cannot skip, rust, or not. It is open and completely sanitary. This is a piece of the And here's a hint to housewives. You'll find this killer tray ideal for the taste of the food. Besides all these features, every piece of the refrigerator carries a five year protection plan at only one dollar a year and provide a complete safety of the food. There is an eight point temperature control. For modern features, dependability of low cost, buy and eat.
Friday night, Julia's job is to prepare the grocery prices of our neighborhood stores for Saturday morning shopping. When that matter is settled, I figure maybe I can get in a little reading before it's time to go to bed. That is, after the radio turns down a little. And now it's my time to laugh. Just to wind up with a typical birthday in my life. Today is Saturday, my work at home day. There's always a million and one things to be done around the house. I just been started while Julia's out doing the shopping. There are five big neighborhood markets within a couple of blocks of our house. Julia's spread the shopping around. Going when the prices are lower, the quality's best. The six miles of beef, food is a big item in our budget, and we have to make sure we get the most for our money. Every Saturday morning, Julia buys stuff for the entire week. So she takes her time and sees that everything she gets is fresh and good. The vegetables and fruits she buys from one store are meat from another. We're all big meat eaters in our family, even little Jack. That means she has to make sure there's plenty to go around. Also on Saturday mornings, I usually take an hour or so to go over the accounts and bills, figuring out ways to double stretch that check of mine to pay them. Upkeep on the house and car, electricity, gas, and all the rest. From Johnson West. The Johnson's Wax Polisher Truck, an amazing new appliance that can save you hours of backbreaking work. It will give you extra hours of leisure time. The effort is pure stand floor chair, automatic floor chair, all through the house, all through the year. This gives you an idea of the kind of action you ought to play. Now there is a floor you can really be proud of. The Johnson's Wax Polisher Truck is a professional type of single wax design.
job of getting acquainted with our new neighborhood, meeting our neighbors, making friends with the people we'd be living close to, probably for the rest of our lives. All of Julia's time and that of our children, and most of mine too, would be spent in this house of ours, on this street, living among and with these people. <laughs> Why does salad taste so much better with best food real mayonnaise? Because of best food superb ingredients. Full eggs, freshly broken from the shell, fresh, fresh salad oil, soy vinegar and spices, and extra egg yolk. Ordinary starch and dressing just can't compare. The whole egg flavor of best food real mayonnaise is so much better for salad. Or easy sauces like this. Blend two parts best food to one part milk and a little lemon juice. Serve hot and creamy to burn up any vegetables. It's so good. No wonder best food is America's largest selling mayonnaise by two to one. Neighbors, 
everything was fine, except that Jeannie ran into a little trouble in school. One night I came home and found her crying, and Julia was plenty upset. Jeannie had a note from her teacher. She had to do better in the wrist and dick or be put in a lower grade.
The world is unfair to a dieter. Who can stay on a diet when this is all there is to eat it? Now, from the Edward Norton Company comes today's new way to diet. Good method, the world's first 300 calorie diet dinner. Now you can actually eat full meals, like meat, potatoes, grazes, twice a day, and still lose as much weight as you would with a well-known liquid diet. Is it possible? Until now, the Edward Norton Company discovered how to cut whole calories in full meals, like meat, too. So each dinner is precisely 300 calories as you simply complete as a meal can be. Here's a diet not too cheap to get to. Eat an average breakfast. For lunch and dinner, enjoy full meals of good and good food. Chicken, food, or at least on carnage. And you do as much weight as you would with a well-known liquid diet. Dieters rejoice with good measure diet dinner. Father to 
giant arteries will link together all nations and help create a better understanding among the peoples of the world. As in the past, the highway will continue to play a vital role in the process of civilization. It will be our magic carpet, new hope, new dreams, and a better way of life. Five in Fluffo, Canada's highest quality shortening at a low, low price. Fluffo fried potatoes are tasty, suggesting fresh, pure Fluffo, Canada's highest quality shortening at a low, low price. Welcome to Futurama 2. Welcome to a journey into the future. A journey for everyone today into the everywhere of tomorrow. Let us explore together the future. A future not of dreams, but of reality. It is now tomorrow. On the moon, there is no air to breathe. No rain to pour. No sound that can be heard. Yet, here is man, exploring building his first bridgehead in his span of space. Lunar rovers float magically over powdered flames, range the crater's edge, their elastic train-like bodies conforming to every surface character of the moon. Here are bases of communication and supply, islands of existence, built to withstand the melting heat of the lunar day, the shattering cold of the lunar night. Men in space now monitor the Earth, while men on Earth are finding a whole new world of answers to the worldwide needs of man. A diamond brilliance draws us to a frozen shore, to Antarctica, the southern polar cap of the world. Here, nations of the world Speaking the common language of science, probe for the Earth's secrets through countless centuries of ice. In local laboratories, form expeditions into the vast white wastelands of the still unknown. And here is Weather Central, forecasting to the world the great climatic changes born in the Antarctic's never-ending wind. Technicians, kept warm within their walls of ice, gather data from the depths of space, from polar winds, surrounding seas. In microseconds, relaying information wherever needed, anywhere on Earth. Three quarters of our Earth lies beneath the cold, still beach of the sea. A water world in which we now can find abundance far beyond our dreams. Now we can farm and harvest a drifting, swimming, never-ending nourishment, food enough to feed seven times the population of the Earth. In aquacopters, search the ocean floor to find miles deep, vast fields of precious minerals and ores. And in the deepest trenches of the sea, study at first hand long hidden secrets of survival. Work easily the rich oil deposits of the continental shelves, while trains of submarines transport materials and goods along the waterways of the undersea. And in warmer seas are new realms of pleasure. A weekend, if you wish, at Hotel Atlantis, in the kingdom of the sea. A holiday of thrills and of adventure, of radiant wonders in the sun-bright gardens of the sea. Fabulous coral reefs lead us back to the land, an equatorial land. Now, technology has found a way to control the wild pursuit of this wonder world. A jungle road is built in one continuous operation. First, the steering ray of light, the laser beam, cuts through the trees. Then, a giant machine, a factory on wheels grinds up the stumps and jungle growth, sets the firm foundation, forms the surface plant, sets them in place, and the roadway bed is paved. These forest highways now are bringing to the innermost depths of the tropic world the goods and materials of progress and prosperity. 
creating productive communities that can enter profitably the markets of the world, and offering to us all enchanting tours through the storybook forests of tropic lands. The mountain barrier, legendary challenge of man, now invites communal living in a world of awesome beauty. A new system of highways spans the continent to transport men and goods swiftly and separately across the land. And for our desert, a new technology, waters from the sea made fresh as rain and a nourished crop planted in the sand. Produce from seed to shipment programmed and processed by a new agriculture. A science of plenty for an ever-growing world. People live today where they will. Neither terrain nor distance are deterrent to where the men of the city build their homes. All roads lead, as they have for centuries, to the great centers of commerce and communication, as the Continental Highway now leads us to the city of tomorrow. Plazas of urban living rise over freeways. Vehicles electronically based, travel routes remarkably safe, swift, and efficient. Towering terminals serve sections of the city, make public transportation more convenient, provide ample space for private cars, and from a lower level, covered moving walks radiate to shopping areas that are now truly marketplaces of the world. Its traditions and its faith preserved, there is new beauty and new strength in the city of tomorrow. Technology can point the way to a future of limitless promise, but man must start his own course into tomorrow, a course that frees the mind and the spirit as it improves the well-being of mankind. How do you do, sir? All right. Uh, won't you do, sir? Well, you see, uh, uh, but, sir, we want your personal reaction to our big new shooter Sure, sure. Please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Just one week from tonight on this very program, we're going to show you our big new Studebaker. November 22nd, at your local Studebaker dealers, you can see it in person. A slightly handsome young couple coming out of the store. Uh, how do you do? Ah, you like it? We love it. I know it's still a secret, but that big new body goes wide. Ah, 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 ah. Let's try and keep that quiet one more. Well, you know, from a woman's point of view, the new incident. I know what you mean, but that's what you should do. Well, that's not what you say, right? Yeah, yeah, you better. Just think it from every angle. Don't make it crap. Go on. 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 What did you think about it, sir? What do I think? Boy, I know. Studebaker's great. A standout car in the whole bright field. Where did you see? At your Studebaker dealers on November 22nd. And your own personal preview right here on this very show next week. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? I would just ask Ooh. our guest if uh, you are fully familiar with how we keep score. Yes. All right, then in that case, let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is.
general question to you is how they respect you. Uh, are you associated with any of the art? Yes. Uh, would you ever have been seen on television? Yes. Are you a performer? Yes. Uh, would you be considered a leading man? Yes. I swear I got I gotta move in here. Actually, in the general context of the question, we would have to accept that all the affirmative replies, except perhaps the last one, are not misleading in any major degree. However, I think the last answer is misleading, and we could not accurately describe our guest as a leading man. He's a misleading man. Misleading <laughs> man. Why down to 90 million? Yes. Uh, have you been eminent in some field other than television? Yes. Uh, would it be the sort of exploit that might possibly reach the front page of a newspaper? Yes. Is it is it an exploit that's been on the front page of the newspapers within the past couple of weeks? No. No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Gilgallis. Uh, do you imagine that we're blindfolded because one or more of us would recognize you at the site? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Uh, are you accustomed to appearing before audience? Yes. When you appear before audiences, do you ever wear less than you're wearing now? When you appear before audiences, do you ever wear less than you are wearing now? I would say that under certain specific conditions, it is not impossible that our guests would wear less than it's being worn now, but it's not necessarily germane to what it is we're trying to write. Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> that is our kind of question. Yes. Uh, are you aware that the Chicago Tribune has been reported as having sports or any form of athletic endeavor? Yes. yes. that our guests have a basic affiliation with sports. This is not to say that it is not within the compass of his enjoyment to indulge in this particular endeavor. Thank you. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Lawford. I'm still working on the last one. Um, do you uh, appear continuously on television? By that I mean once a week or once a month, can I see you? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Brent. Uh, do you, uh, do you use anything in your hand for your job? Like a pencil or a, a typewriter or anything like that? Yes. Uh, would you be considered a writer? Would you be considered a writer? Yes, I would. There's nothing this man does. Are you well known because of a book that has been published of yours? Miss, Miss Arlene, if I may interrupt here, I would have to agree that we must consider that our guest is a writer. If we're going to agree that we must consider that our guest is a writer, we're going to consider it. You mean we're going to consider whether he is or whether he isn't? No, this is merely uh, actually to try and be completely fair. Uh, the talents of our guests are not encompassed oh. entirely in this area of um, work. Oh, then you can do several things. Truly, except for it. That's a fair assumption, you know. Uh-huh. Um, have you had... I'm terribly lost. Have you had something published? Does our guest have something published? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, does he write humor in today? You write humor in there? Yes, yes, then I think it's properly yes and no. Oh. Um. 
could he, uh, does he ever do any drawing like comic strips? Do you ever do any drawing like comic strips? Yes. It is rather well known. In fact, it would be almost caricatured just by that. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Arlene. Are you Salvador Dali? Salvador Dali. Ready for stuffing and roasting. 
that's the modern quick frozen table dress shirt. And the other headlines are the new breast filters, weighing only 5 to 10 pounds, meal size, small family size, a new breed, a specially developed by the United States Department of Agriculture Experiment Station at Beltville, Maryland. Specially selected birds as our all features. Buttermilk and grain bed, expertly, completely clean, the turkey transparent wrap in moisture, all the fine flavor foot frozen in. The larger one, labeled as to the exact kind of bird, pen or top, exact weight shown on every bird, label dress, ready for the oven, ready at their future flavor perfection any time in the year. That is new. To compare costs between a New York dress and one of these table dress turkeys, a New York dress turkey was weighed as it occurred at the market, the bed and feet on, this or in. This is the weight and table of such turkeys. This is what you have left to cook. Here are the discarded parts.
Vanquish. Vanquish? Jeez, like that. I bet Vanquish folks back Well, your tablet probably didn't get what caused your pain, Jessica. Is that what made my headache come back? Likely. The Vanquish works different. Oh? I read that what causes most headaches is pressure on nerves. Uh, nerves. And Vanquish acts on this pressure. Well, you're at least so long lasting, most headaches don't come back. Hope it would. For me? For what? You got rid of my headache. Uh, not me. Vanquish. If you ever take more than two tablets, shouldn't you try Vanquish? New Vanquish. For relief so long lasting, most headaches don't come back. One and one half cup of the rich liquid broth. No necessity. This could moisten only lightly, since the dressing draws moisture from the turkey itself and could become too soggy with too much liquid in that. And now, news on how to stuff and stuff. After rubbing the inside of the bird with one teaspoon of salt, stuff the neck cavity first. Hold the wings close against the body. Pull the neck skin back over the wing tip and skewer the duck. Stuff the body lightly. That stuff isn't going to swell, so give it room. Two or three pieces of skewers across the opening. Then lace with a cord the way a boot is laid. Cross the neck. Wind around the leg. And draw the legs close together. To the tail. For actual roast, the very best way is to put the bird's breast down in a V-shaped roaster rack. Thus, the sweet fat from the back and melt and run truthfully down through the breast tube. Brush all over with melted fat, halfway through the road to turn breast up. And there you are, turkey ready to roast, prepared exactly the same way, whether it's meal-sized belt film or the larger version. a special news tip. When the roasting time is given at so much per pound, this means so much stuffing weight. For an easy way to figure stuffing just add approximately one quart to the weight shown on the wrapper of your table dress turkey. Say the bird weighs 13 pounds. Add one fourth its weight for stuffing. Three and one fourth pounds. This adds up to 16 and a quarter pounds. Just weight. Take your roasting time for this way. It's all here on the shelf. A 16 pound bird like this. 15 to 17 minutes per pound, or about four and a half hours. For the smaller six pound meal size bird, 30 to 35 minutes per pound, or about three and a half hours. Keep the oven low, 325 degrees. With so many dishes. For this dinner, say for a Sunday in March, we could get crab apple pickles, buttered green beans, mashed potatoes, a crisp salad. The turkey's out of the oven. 
a meal dive belt here, five to seven pounds. Just right for a family of four to five. And there it is, eating ready. The family just is ready, and there's that bird. A delicacy to eat to make any meal festive. Easy to serve, calendar round. along top lusty for picnic or any neighborhood social. A dish of chips perfect. Dirty rice chatter. Cube about three cups of the meat of a cold, already cooked turkey. Cook until the rice is soft, but not much. Then add one fourth cup of green pepper, one fourth cup of chopped pimento, one and a half to two teaspoons of salt. Three-fourths teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And the cube turkey. Put it in the casserole. Edge with one-fourth cup of bread crumbs. Mix with one tablespoon of melted butter. Bake one hour in a 350 degree oven. The distinctive flavor of good, rich bites of turkey, combined with all the flavors of the sauce, makes this a social star. This is the part. I think that is me. That is me. And now, too. Here comes the bride. And here's a wedding buffet as beautiful as she is. A buffet crowned by wedding cake. And the perfect occasion of salad. Filthy almond salad. For family size proportions, cube two cups of cold turkey. Add half this quantity, one cup, of fine red grape beef. One cup delicately thin slices of green celery. And sprinkle with crisply toasted almonds. Just enough dressing to moisten. There's something new and exciting in the very crotty kitchen. And here's Betty Crocker herself. And this is what we're so excited about. My new marble cake mix. It's entirely new. The only marble cake mix in one package because you can mix in one bowl. And the one bowl method makes it so very easy. You just add water and two fresh eggs. Now, when you mix the batter, pour three quarters of it into two cakes. Now comes the fun. From this special envelope that comes inside the package, Stir in the fine chocolate dark mix. Then drop dabs of the chocolatey batter over the light batter. To make that wonderful marble pattern, run a nice tube like this. And there's your Betty Crocker marble cake. Children love it and grown up too. It's so tender, so light, and we find you one bowl marble cake mix. I promise you a perfect marble cake every time you go. Cake after cake after cake. Thank you. 
share your favorite mustard sauce. Mouth watering this for another meal that night. Like this. 
For anyone with training in institution management, though, it's just like planning a family dinner. And this is Joanne. In high school, she always helped decorate for the party. She liked it. She still decorated. She had good pay now for doing it. And a fine arts major in home economics helped her develop this skill. Jane couldn't resist daydreaming herself into this kind of job. Folks would look to her to help them make a wise choice. She would be asked to go out on appointments. To help people plan what they are home. The speaker told of other girls who knew real girls in real jobs. specialized in foods and nutrition, others in education, in textiles and clothing, household equipment, child development, applied arts, institution management, journalism, home economics, all of this and more people. For Carol, who is now Mrs. Bill Johnson, took a general home economics course. Not one which would lead to professional employment, but one which fitted her for that very important career of being Kay's home would be like this. There were many times she was glad that her college training had prepared her so well for her home life. She didn't even realize that she was using some of the knowledge she had gained. And that her knowledge meant so much to her family as well as to herself. It wasn't hard for Alice to return to reality. But as for Kay, well, making a dream come true often depends on a very little thing. After day, she had passed by that little book. But now it suddenly held the key to a wonderful future. Of course, there were things she would have to do. Apply for admission, study the courses, and... Oh, yes. Yeah. What would mom and dad do? There was only one way to find out. This was important. You realize that now, even before they said it. You could tell that mom and dad knew that it was important to you. Knowledge for Kay would mean sacrifice for mom and dad. Would it be worth the sacrifice? the letter for the line of time. She got a real thrill out of dropping that letter in the box. Waiting for a reply was harder. Everybody watched the mail. And then it came. You'd have thought Kay was leaving for college the next day. Later it will have a holy look. Now it was a big deal. Wonder where the parents are. Where would the room be? Who would be the brain? Wonder if we could ever know her way around here. Wonder what her room would be like. Wonder what her room would be like. Before you know it, it's time for the folks to leave. 
And all our dreams about college may have never included the moment when dad and mom said goodbye, when she would be on her own.
for the acid tomato slowly into cold milk and where you can see the cookies and drinks we apply to the Whether it's a class in food preparation or a class in textiles and clothing, applied chemistry is mighty important. Do you know what would happen if you used acetone on some rayon? It's important to know how to take care of them. It's important to know how to make them correctly in the first place. And again, this whole fun story, the girls learn that science and art are not far apart. The same in a house must be planned for many days. For comfort, for economy. Will be heard. Perhaps you'll be 
designing the clothing you would see pictured in fashion magazine. Perhaps you'll be the first you who has brought up the pattern you will buy at the store. Perhaps he will show you how you can create beautiful clothes for yourself, or help you choose them at the store. Jean may even find another use for her talent. By combining her knowledge of art and textiles, she may follow a career in textile design. The days are filled with other interests and classes, too. You would expect to find Kay with her interest in teaching in a child development class. But she is there, too. The study chosen clothing requirements? Well, yes. But more than that, all economics means much more than a career. It's a study of everything that makes up a home, including those who live there. The girls learn a lot from the children of the nursery school. All habits and attitudes learned at this age are so important in later life. They learn how much depends on getting along with others. For after all, we live in a world where people are more important than they think. Yes, college is a rich variety. You tell mom and dad about the rest of living. One little boy is just dying. I really like that class. And the beginning. Each good time mingled with the memories of other good times. You'll never forget them. They were the glittering threads woven through the very pattern of college life. busier than ever in her advanced courses in textiles and clothing. Helen was deep in studies on tool fine getting her money's worth, that is. One of the many things she'll be doing next year in her job as a dietist. And Louise, wouldn't you know she'd be in a household equipment laboratory?
five-pound party that Dan had to announce this week. every century has been its skyline. The very ancient, the old, the medieval, the modern. Imprints of man's never-ending path of progress, silhouetted against the ageless canvas of the sky. Our day, our time, our signature, our skyline. 
metal fingers beckoning to the invisible, calling to sound the ear cannot hear and sight beyond the range of the unaided eye. Our era, the era of television. The dream of television had persisted for centuries. The human eye is a miraculous instrument, perceptive, sensitive, forever tuned to the pulsating wavelengths of light. Yet the eye is hemmed in by horizon. It cannot see over a hillside or beyond the haze of distance. To extend the range of human eyesight, man develops marvelously sensitive instruments. They're not cool. giant telescope to probe the furthest span of space. But always there were barriers. Distance. Could man fling pictures to the sky and gather them in at a distant point? It was a provoking challenge. And nowhere did the challenge provoke more unending experiment and research than at RCA. As far back as the 1920s, two men took up this challenge. They share the irresistible dream of television. David Sarnoff, chairman of the board of RCA. Dr. Vladimir Dworkin, honorary vice president and technical consultant of RCA. Dr. Dworkin, every now and then uh, I like to put the calendar back and uh, remember another important occasion when you came to my office. You were a good salesman, and I was a good dreamer. We talked about broadcasting moving images by electronics. And I remember that I asked you what it would cost to develop an all-electronic television system. Do you recall your estimate? Yes, I remember. I asked something for $800,000. Your estimates missed by quite a bit. It cost RCA more than $50 million to create, to develop, and introduce America's first all-electronic television system. And since that time, as you know, RCA has spent another $70 million to pioneer and develop the compatible color television system. But how well that money was spent? isn't extending the human sight far beyond the horizon. Here's yes. a wonderful thing about it. The extension of our sight. You are better acquainted with this progress, General, than anyone, because of your participation and leadership in so many stages of the division development. It was nearly 30 years ago, and I came to your office with that too. The first I of the year. Yes, I well remember. Nearly 30 years ago. And what a great invention that you have become. It certainly has fulfilled its destiny. Well, General, this is the grandfather of the pickup too. You want to see the new grandchild? Well, I'm all for grandchildren. Let's have a look at it. Well, here it is. Well, wow. it certainly looks very interesting. What do you expect this grandchild to do? Well, that's what they call Mr. Edicon. And I hope again, sure, if you replace all these, it needs to pick up you for all the purposes. Well, that's very interesting and certainly very promising because what we need to do is to reduce the size and the cost of these components so that television Color television, both at the transmitting and the receiving end, may be within the reach of everyone. That is my hope. The 
turning point came in 1923, when Dr. Warrison invented the iconoscope. This tube, after years of further development, became the image orthicon, the electronic eye of the modern television camera. In 1929, Dr. Warrickin and his associates announced the first successful electronic kinescope, forerunner of today's television picture view. The circuit was complete. All electronic television was achieved. It worked. How? The lens of the television camera acts like the iris of the human eye. It gathers in the light rays and focuses them on a mosaic of light-sensitive material that is built into the picture tube. The light-sensitive material converts the light into electrical impulses, a reaction varying with the strength of the light. The optic nerve of the camera picture tube is the electron beam, controlled by electromagnets. The beam scans the picture which is on the plate in rapid sweeping motion from side to side, from top to bottom. When the beam hits the image, it loses varying amounts of electrons and then bounces back to the opposite end of the picture tube where it is amplified millions of times. It is led off to the transmitter in the form of electric current. Signals are broadcast as radio impulses into space. Part of the receiving set is the kinescope. Here, the action is reversed. The stream of electrons synchronized perfectly with those of the camera view, literally picture information on a chemically treated screen line by line. The glow is bright when the beam is strong, less bright when it is weak. Thus, the picture is reassembled. 1931. Atop the Empire State Building, the National Broadcasting Company, a service of RCA, erected the transmitting antenna for experimental television station W2XVS. Now, RCA's technical scientists tackle the next goal, improvement of picture quality. Hitherto, using a mechanical process, the best that could be transmitted was a crude signal of 60 scanning lines. RCA turned to the new science of electronics, discarded the mechanical spinning disc, and soon doubled, tripled, then tripled again the scanning line. Now television was really on its way. In 1937, television strode out of the studio with mobile vans developed by RCA and NBC. Versatile, self-sustained. New eyes, new vision for the world. A man could sit at home, yet his eyes could scan the countryside. A bright new era dawning, a new dimension in communication. Distance reduced to microwaves, walls, barriers, mountain direct. Television, the ultimate triumph in man's search for sight beyond the range of the human eye. 1939, television is ready to make its official public debut. The setting could hardly be more perfect. The New York World Fair. It seems the world of tomorrow. And the world of tomorrow became the world of today. The RCA exhibit building, where on April 29th, 1939, David Sonoff said it, we have added radio sites to sound. Nothing. Nothing else gets to the breaking spark 
spiteful enjoys an ice cold Coca Cola. Coke has a distinctive flavor all its own that no one has ever succeeded in that. No wonder Coca Cola is the most asked for soft drink in the world. watching the 3,000 television sets then in New York, so the first president ever televised, Franklin D. Roosevelt, officially opening the world of tomorrow. Via television, the viewers toured with the king and queen of England through Pavilion and Midway. Day by day, television produced new adventures, new victories, new excitement, new thrills. NBC presented the first baseball game ever televised, August 1939. 1940, the nerve-fueling drama of a national political convention, the first ever televised. Philadelphia and New York were knit together by the electronic miracle of television. Radio relays, pioneered by RCA, and the telephone company coaxial cables, wiped out the horizon as the far limit of television. Still in the trial and error stage, television began studying its own future as a tremendous new medium of entertainment. The first programs were simple, unpretentious, proving grounds for technicians, cameramen, directors, writers, and performers. Slowly, the know-how was gained. Bit by bit, creative imagination began to give form and substance to the new art form called television. four-year blackout for commercial TV. And television enlisted for the duration. Research went forward at War Temple. At RCA's David Conoff Research Center, Princeton, New Jersey, 24-hour shifts explored every corner of the new world of electronics.
Find out about some of them. Drive one at your Chrysler from the speed. Learn how the power of leadership is yours in a Chrysler. Cameramen, lighting experts, set designers, writers, directors were experiencing, studying, learning the new techniques of a great new medium. electronic. 
second, it must be completely compatible. These were the goals. Continues to grow to imposing proportions. 
an entirely new adventure and entertainment for the American public. For pioneered and developed by RCA, is counted as one of the outstanding scientific and artistic triumphs of the 20th century. It has added a new dimension to the entertainment part and has intensified television as a social and educational force. Mobile units in a coat of many colors transmit outdoor color telecasts, adding new sparkle and new buoyancy to television coverage of great sporting events. The first World Series ever color televised, 1955. Football, the youngest art form, the easiest understood, the lively, the bright, television full and captivating color. the horizon, international television, to span oceans, capture all the vivid beauty of far lands, find people of all nations, tied together by better understanding, better knowledge, through instantaneous communication of sight and sound. Every time you bake, this office is at the end. And 
just want to hear a special broadcast tonight. So they're hard at work, each in his or her room. No outside interference, and no radio now. This boy and girl both consider their schoolwork one of their most important obligations to themselves and their family. Now that their homework is finished and the is put away, this boy and girl have ample time to enjoy their favorite program. Let me repeat, they are enjoying the program. Mother and father are enjoying a bridge game with some friends. One of the principal rules in this house is that a radio or phonograph is heard only in the room in which it is played, so that only those who wish to listen may do so. Well, that's the kind of a brother to have. 
sharing personal belongings to this family is a common practice because every member feels an obligation as a borrower to do the lender. Yes, this takes care of things loan to her. She knows that brother would have to pay for a restringing job out of his allowance. She's going to save him every dime she can. And speaking of money, this family has worked out a program that can feed any boy and girl, and at the same time, they better sit in some. The share of family money given to each one for personal use is divided into three parts. Some to save for saving things, and there is a steady record of the money. Some to save for something they want. A new sweater for her wardrobe, perhaps. For brother, a new drop rod. Then there is some left to spend for abuse. The usual sodas and cokes and picture shows. It's up to brother and sister to decide how much they will allocate for each person. They manage their own funds, and in doing so, learn the value of money. In this family, the members have learned to live with each other by understanding their obligations and fulfilling them. They cooperate by making each other's chores as light as possible. They are able to enjoy life more because they have more time for enjoyment. And the feeling that tasks assigned to them have been accomplished. They are alert to the problems that confront all of them. And they will be prepared to cope with each problem as it arises. They have a sense of security because they understand the value of money and other material things assigned to their care. This boy and girl are going to be well equipped when the time comes to take their places as worthy members of adult society. How about going back over what we do? Our goal is, obviously, to avoid becoming another case like Mr. Smith, a man whose present sad condition is avoided if he had learned quite young how to organize his life on the hands of his obligations. A family in a state of perpetual chaos is really just the family which is living up to its own responsibility. What you can do to avoid turning out to be like Smith is not so hard. Learn to take care of your own position. Keep your own rules. Have it. It's an obligation you owe your family and yourself. Learn to get up in the morning early enough to have a pleasant and satisfactory day for the day. So you'll start off in good health and good spirits. And while we're at it, you may as well remind you that you'll live most of your life in some sort of schedule. If you learn to keep that schedule so that it doesn't get ahead of you, you won't mind living by the clock. One of your chief obligations is to pay close attention to your studies during the Presumably your parents sent you to school to get everything possible out of the experience, not merely to comply with the law. It's your obligation to make the most of school now. It will reward you well when you're earning your own living. The problem of allocating radio and television time can get to be a sore point with any family. To avoid trouble, do your chores and homework first. Then take time off for your favorite program. And when you're listening, remember yourself. Don't let it bother others. When mother and dad entertain, remember that you share the role of host in your home too. And they want you to be part of the pride they feel in you. Be their guest. Great. Speaking of pride in your home, don't wait to be reminded that the yard is cleaning up. After all, if you're going to entertain, you'll want your home to look the best. Your friends won't mind if your home is modest, but they will if you're not getting it. That's the condition you can change. Any time you must be urgent to borrow the possessions of some other member of the family, make sure you take good care of them and return them on time. It's an obligation to hold their own thank you. One of your principal obligations is to systematize your savings so that when you see some sweet sheet, you will very much want it. You won't have to make a stand for it or borrow on next week's allowance. Learning to take care of family obligations in early years is easy. After all, it's only a matter of getting into a pattern of good living habits. Once they become habits, you need to worry about them. Take care of your obligations now. And when you meet the responsibilities of adult life, 
You'll find that they will take care of you.
There are five big neighborhood markets within a couple of blocks of our house. Julia is fresh and shopping around. Going where the prices are lower, the quality is best. The six miles to be food is a big item in our budget. We have to make sure we get the most for our money. Every Saturday morning, Julia buys stuff for the entire week. So she takes her time and sees that everything she gets is fresh and good. The vegetables and fruits she buys from one store or meat from another. We're all big meat eaters in our family, even little Jackie. That means she has to make sure there's plenty to go around. Also on Saturday mornings, I usually take an hour or so to go over the account and still, figuring out ways to double stretch that check of mine to pay them. I'll keep on the house and car, electricity, gas, and all the rest. From Johnson Wax, the Johnson Wax Monitor Club, an amazing new appliance that can save you hours of backbreaking work that will give you extra hours of leisure time. Yes, it's the newest thing in floor care. Automatic floor care, all through the house, all through the year. This gives you an idea of the kind of back you ought to say. Now there is a floor you can really be proud of. The Johnson Wax Monitor Club is the professional type single brush design. Superior and commercial machines. Here's one of them with a single button design. The light is easy to carry. Far lighter than the average one. Let's go into the machine and I'll show you something else. Now, just a quick brush. And we have the most handiest automatic rubber. Here's how it works. Here's the machine. Now, you can see it's easy to work. The floor has a single brush, never jumps, never spins. Yes, it does all the scrubbing, and you stand up all the way. It uses single brush design to make spatters and walls of woodwork. When you take up the side, there is the cleanest floor you've ever seen. This is the greatest thing in floor care for the home. The wonderful new work saving Johnson Wax Polisher Scrubber. See it at your appliance or department store. As I started to unfold my check, all of a sudden, I had an odd feeling about the date on it. It was exactly 13 years ago this week that I first went to work in the 15 years. A lot of things have happened to me since that first year. It was that big day when I joined our auto workers union, the UAW, United Auto Workers. And not long after that, when the fellows in my department elected me to stop and do it, In our department had any grievances or complaints, they brought them to me and I'd take them up with the foreman. If the foreman felt he couldn't make a fair decision or settle the grievance, he went to a higher representative of management. Recreational classes for the youngsters of our members. I think that someday mine would be. 
learning to dance and enjoying it like these children. I remember that day when Julia and I made up our minds we were through paying money to landlords and we were going to build our own home. Easier said than done. We had to scrimp and save every penny to get the money needed for a down payment on a new home. But one day, our bank deposit book showed that the money was finally saved. We took this money, got ourselves a Federal Housing Administration loan, and we were on our way. Our new home was finished, and we were ready to move in. Then we had the job of getting acquainted with our new neighborhood, meeting our neighbors, making friends with the people we'd be living close to, probably for the rest of our lives. All of Julia's time and that of our children, and most of mine too, what he spent in this house of ours, a mystery, living among them with these people. Oh, 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 Fresh salad oil, choice vinegar and spices, and extra egg yolk. Ordinary sauce and dressing just can compare. The whole egg flavor of best food, real mayonnaise, is so much better for salad. Or, the sauce is like this. Blend two parts best food to one part milk and a little lemon juice. Serve hot and creamy the burnt up any vegetable. It's so good. No wonder best food in America's largest selling mayonnaise by two to one. I got an inkling of the kind of neighbors we had the first time I tried to mow the lawn for that ancient broken down lawnmower of mine. The people next door, across the road, down the street, turned out to be friendly and healthy. The fact is, we weren't strangers very long. Those neighbors of ours, working people like myself, made us feel at home right off. It wasn't long before we were getting together for a Saturday night card party. We found it a swell way to send it. Matter of fact, we killed it. Neither Julia nor I have ever missed voting in any election. Of Smith Church on Sunday morning. The new home, the friendly neighbors, everything was fine. Except that we ran into a little trouble at school. One night I came home and found her crying, and Julia was plenty upset. She had a note from her teacher that she had to do better in arithmetic or be put in a lower grade. With this light trick material, you can get all the nourishment of oak leaves. For this is Post Parkable, a new recipe cereal with all the nourishment of oats. But without cooking, that family is not used to it. Lots of it, the kind that oats can give them. And they can get it with Post Heart of Oats and Milk. So give your family the strength of oats with new Post Heart of Oats. And you know something? They taste just a little bit better. I believe I felt even worse about things than 
I thought maybe I could help her with her problems. On my job, I used blueprints. Dealt with figures and numbers all the time. But it had been a good while back since I tackled high school math. I figured the best thing to do was for Julia to go down and have a talk with me teacher. So one afternoon, she went to school. Full meals of good and good food, too. Chicken, reduced, or nearly concurrent, 
and still lose as much weight as you would with the well-known liquid diet. Dieters rejoice with good measure diet fitness. Safety and comfort will be the keynotes of tomorrow's highway. A multicolored highway system may enable the motorist to reach his destination by following the correct color strip. The increasing speed of tomorrow's automobile will demand that highway signs be larger and more simple to read, so that the motorist can anticipate his moves well in advance. Better visibility will be featured in new highway design. And stay dimmed in the night. Electric eyes automatically illuminate the way ahead. Radiant heat will keep the highway surfaces dry through rain, ice, and snow. If visibility is poor, our windshield becomes a radar screen, showing the outline of objects ahead. Or, fog may be eliminated by dispelling devices along the right-of-way. Dashboard panels featuring built-in safety controls and electronic operating devices are predictions for the bar. A quarter-type panel shows up to the minute traffic The recommended safe driving speed is automatically indicated. Our rear-view mirror is actually a television picture.
Escalator ramps carry office workers from level to level. Welcome to a journey into the future, 
A journey for everyone today and to be everywhere of tomorrow. Let us explore together the future. A future not of dreams, but of reality. It is now tomorrow. On the moon, there is no air to breathe. No rain to fall. No sound that can be heard. Yet, here is man, exploring, building his first bridgehead in his span of space. Lunar rovers float magically over powdered flesh, range the crater's edge. Their elastic, train-like bodies conform to every surface character of the moon. Here are bases of communication and supply, islands of existence built to withstand the melting heat of the lunar day to the shattering cold of the lunar night. Men in space now monitor the Earth, while men on Earth are finding a whole new world of answers to the worldwide needs of man. A diamond brilliance draws us to a frozen shore, to Antarctica, the southern polar cap of the world. Here, nations of the world, speaking the common language of science, probe for the Earth's secret through countless centuries of ice. In mobile laboratories, form expeditions into the vast white wastelands of the still unknown. And here is Weather Central, forecasting to the world the great climatic changes born in the Antarctic's never-ending wind. Technicians, kept warm within their walls of ice, gather data from the depths of space, from polar winds, surrounding seas. In microseconds, relaying information wherever needed, anywhere on Earth. Three quarters of our Earth lies beneath the cold, still deeps of the sea. A water world in which we now can find abundance far beyond our dreams. Now we can farm and harvest a drifting, swimming, never-ending nourishment. Food enough to feed seven times the population of the Earth. In aquacopters, search the ocean floor to find miles deep, vast fields of precious minerals and ores. And in the deepest trenches of the sea, study at first hand long hidden secrets of survival. Work easily the rich oil deposits of the continental shelf, while trains of submarines transport materials and goods along the waterways of the undersea. And in warmer seas are new realms of pleasure. A weekend, if you wish, at Hotel Atlantis in the kingdom of the sea. A holiday of thrills and of adventure, of radiant wonders in the sun-bright gardens of the sea. Fabulous coral reefs lead us back to the land, an equatorial land. Now, technology has found a way to control the wild profusion of this wonder world. A jungle road is built in one continuous operation. First, the steering ray of light, the laser beam, cuts through the trees. Then, a giant machine, a factory on wheels grinds up the stumps and jungle growth, sets the firm foundation, forms the surface land, sets them in place, and the roadway bed is paved. These forest highways now are bringing to the innermost depths of the tropic world the goods and materials of progress and prosperity creating productive communities that can enter profitably the markets of the world and offering to us all enchanting tours through the storybook forests of tropic land. The mountain barrier, legendary challenge of man, now invites communal living in a world of awesome beauty. A new system of highways spans the continent to transport men and goods swiftly and separately across the land. And for our desert, a new technology, waters from the sea made fresh as rain, 
to nourish crops planted in the sand. Produce from seed to shipment, programmed and processed by a new agriculture. A science of plenty for an ever-growing world. People live today where they will. Neither terrain nor distance a deterrent to where the men of the city build their homes. All roads lead, as they have for centuries, to the great centers of commerce and communication, as the Continental Highway now leads us to the city of tomorrow. Plazas of urban living rise over freeways. Vehicles electronically paced travel routes remarkably safe, swift, and efficient. Towering terminals serve sections of the city, make public transportation more convenient, provide ample space for private cars, and from a lower level, covered moving walk radiate the shopping areas that are now truly marketplaces of the world. Its traditions and its faith preserved, there is new beauty and new strength in the city of tomorrow. Technology can point the way to a future of limitless promise, but man must chart his own course into tomorrow, a course that frees the mind and the spirit as it improves the well-being of mankind. How do you do, sir? Well, you see, uh, but, sir, we want your personal reaction to our big new tutor Sure, sure, please. Thank you, sir, thank you. Let's get a big seat. Just one week from tonight on this very program, we're going to show you our big new tutor November 22nd, and after a local tutor dealer, you can see it in person. A slightly handsome young couple coming out of the showroom. Uh, how do you do? Hi. You like it? We love it. I know it's still a secret, but that big new body goes blind. Let's try and keep that quiet one more week. You know, from a woman's point of view, you can do it. I know what you mean, but that's what you could do. All I thought you could say was... Yes, yes, you've got it. Just think it from every angle. We can make it Go on. Go on. What did you think about it, sir? What do I think? Boy, I know. Studebaker's great. A standout car in the low price field. Where did you see? At the Studebaker dealers on November 22nd. And your own personal preview right here on this very show next week. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Yes. All right, man, I, I, I got to move in here. 
Actually, in the general context of the question, we would have to accept that all the affirmative replies, except perhaps the last one, are not misleading in any major degree. However, I think the last answer is misleading, and we could not accurately describe our guest as a leading man. He's a misleading man. Misleading <laughs> man, he's right out of nine shows. Yes. Uh, have you achieved eminence in some field other than television? Yes. Would it be the sort of exploit that might possibly reach the front page of a newspaper? Yes. Is it, is it an exploit that's been on the front page of the newspapers within the past couple of weeks? No. Go down and make go, Mr. Uh, do you imagine that we're blindfolded because one or more of us would recognize you at sight? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Uh, are you accustomed to appearing before audiences? Yes. When you appear before audiences, do you ever wear less than you're wearing now? When you appear before audiences, do you ever wear less than you are wearing now? I would say that under certain specific conditions, it is not impossible that our guests would wear less than is being worn now, but it's not necessarily germane to what it is we're trying to arrive at. Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> that is a kind of up and down yes. But all right, do you have anything to do with sports or any form of athletic and yes? Yes. in the compass of his enjoyment to indulge in particular endeavor. Three down, seven to go, Mr. Lawson. I'm still working on the last one. Um, do you uh, appear continuously on television? By that I mean once a week or once a month when I see you? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Brent. Uh, do you, um... Do you use anything in your hand for your job? Like a pencil or a typewriter or anything like that? Yes. Uh, would you be considered a writer? Would you be considered a writer? Yes, I do. Are you well known because of the book that has been published of yours? Miss, Miss Arlene, if I may interrupt here, I would have to agree that we must consider that our guest is a writer. We're going to agree that we must consider that our guest is a writer. We're going to consider it. You mean we're going to consider whether he is or whether he isn't? No, this is merely uh, actually to try to be completely fair. Uh, the talents of our guests are not encompassed oh. entirely in this area of uh, work. Oh, then you can do several things. Truly, except four. That's a fair assumption. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, have you had? I'm terribly lost. Have you had something published? Does our guest have something published? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, does he write humorous things? Do you write humorous things? Yes, and then I think it's properly yes and no. Oh. Um, could he, uh, does he ever do any drawing like comic strips? Do you ever do any drawing like comic strips? Yes. Is there something quite unusual about our guest? 
buttermilk and grain bed, expertly, completely clean, the dirty transparent wrap, in moisture, all the fine flavors with those in here. The larger one, labeled as to the exact kind of bird, hen or top, as soft weight shown on every bird, table dress, ready for the oven, ready at that piece of flavor to that any time in the That is you. To compare costs between a New York dress and one of these table dress shirts, a New York dress shirt was weighed as it is sold at the market, the head and feet on, insert it in. This is the weight you pay for in such shirts. This is what you have left to cook. Here are the discarded parts. The turkey has lost nearly one fifth of its original weight. When you buy a convenient table dress bird of the same weight, you pay only for the meat you can eat. So with a fine value story to feature, into our bulletin go notes on how to get quick frozen table dress turkeys, treatments worthy of their fine quality. First, how to be soft. If you have plenty of time, let the frost grab you in your refrigerator in the regular food compartment. Allow 24 hours at least. Or if you're in a hurry, get on your cool running walk for one to three hours. When just flying, the legs can be moved. Turkey is ready. And once the frost is your three free, this is a delicate food. Draw and cook and eat. Now, we frost it in flavor bread. The trick is ready for the finest dressing. Giblet dressing. First, remove the parchment wrapped packages of giblet. Place in salted water to take it to cover. Well, 
Your tablets probably didn't get to what caused your pain. Yes, sir. Is that what made my headache come back? Not likely. The back was worse different. Oh? I read that what causes most headaches is pressure on nerves, the vascular nerves. And bank was acting as pressure. Well, you were so long lasting, most headaches don't come back. Hope it was. For me? For what? You got rid of my headache. Huh? Uh, not me. <laughs> Vanquish. If you ever take more than two tablets, should you try Vanquish? You Vanquish for relief so long lasting, most headaches don't come back. And one and one last cup of the lip with lip broth. No discussion. This with moisture only like Since the vessel draws moisture from the tissue itself. Could become too sharp if too much liquid is added. And now, news on how to stuff and stuff. After rubbing the inside of the bird with one teaspoon of salt, stuff the neck cavity first. Pull the wings close against the body. Pull the neck skin back over the wing skin. And pure the dust. Stuff the body nicely. That stuffing is going to swell, so give it room. Put two or three toothpicks or skewers across the opening. Then link with a cord the way a boot is laid. Cross the end. Wind around the leg. And draw the leg close together. Tying securely to the tail. For actual rope, the very best way is to put the bird breast down in a two-shaped rope Thus, the sweet fat from the back can meld and run smoothly down to the breast. Brush all over with melted fat, halfway through the road to turn breast up. And there you are, turkey ready to roll. Prepared exactly the same way, whether it's meal-sized belt meal or the larger version. Here's a special news tip. When the roasting time is given at so much per pound, this means so much stuffing weight. For an easy way to take your stuff weight, just add approximately one fourth to the weight shown on the wrapper of your table dress shirt. Say the bird weighs 13 pounds. Add one fourth its weight for stuffing. Three and one fourth pounds. This adds up to 1,640 pounds, just weight. Thank you, Rosie, for this work. They're all here on the chart. A 16-pound bird like this, 15 to 17 minutes per pound, or about four and a half hours. For the smaller six-pound meal-sized bird, 30 to 35 minutes per pound, or about three and a half hours. Keep the oven low, 375 degrees. So she goes with so many things. For this dinner, say for a Sunday in March, we suggest crab apple pickles, buttered green mashed potatoes, a crisp salad. She's out of the oven. A meal-sized belt meal, five to seven pounds. Just right for a family of four to five. And 
And with the arm, a victory end. Over here, there is 
your favorite mushroom sauce. Mouth-watering, filling, for another meal that night. With the table dress with frozen turkeys available 365 days in the year, that holiday bird has become your turkey any day of the week. For in any size home, at any time of the year, Sunday or Monday, June or January, dinner or snack, there's a turkey ready and waiting for any occasion. Meal size, sandwich size, for you. And now for that time of the year when turkeys are traditionally served, Thanksgiving or Christmas. Once upon a time, the only time people serve turkeys. All was popular, so put in your order early. A golden brown, lump and juicy bird in the best of American tradition. The family headliner as it comes to the table in all its glory. A dish that adds grace to every table. A dish to be thankful for. 365 days in a year. In this New York apartment building over what is Central Park in the lights of the city, a well-known caterer is preparing an after show party for the cast of Louis Delisle. Right, sir? They're all be here. The whole cast, thirsty and hungry like all actors after the show. So we have plenty of food ready. Beer and lots of calling Red Cap Ale on ice. You know, Red Cap's the favorite ale at most parties I see. Why? Because people who really know good ale go for the heartier flavor of Red Cap. It's not what I call Cap. A taste you remember. And here, you see that rich, pink amber color? Let's get all the red caps in the Hardy enough to satisfy the appetite of the show crowd. Yes, red caps are tech. It's all air. And it goes the greatest just a very action show crowd. Enjoy calling red cap air yourself. It's got heaven. Now for 
The speaker told about a girl, real girls with real jobs, good jobs, great jobs, well paid, and everyone that's taken her training is home about it. Some have specialized in food and nutrition, others in education, in textiles and clothing, household equipment, child development, applied art, institution management, journalism. Home economics, all of this and more to you. For instance, Carol, who is now Mrs. Bill Johnson, took a general home economics course. Not one which would lead to professional employment, but one which fitted her for that very important career of being Mrs. Johnson. Stay home when you like this. There were many times she was glad that her college training had prepared her so well for her home life. Many times she didn't even realize that she was using some of the knowledge she had gained, and that her knowledge meant so much to her family as well as to herself. Find out. 